Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, arms and legs inside the ride at all times. Grab your cocktails and we're off to get started. a little ordinary? Is it lacking something awesome? Well, head out to your local liquor store and, and pick, pick up something, something extraordinary. extraordinary. Grab a bottle of Old Umble Straight Whiskey or Old Umble Special Reserve. They're clean, smooth, easy drinking whiskeys that taste the way whiskey should taste. From humble beginnings to an extraordinary finish, Old Umble Whiskeys are what your bar needs today. Walk tall, be awesome, and, and drink humble. Old Umble Straight Whiskey and Old Umble Special Reserve. Get yours today! Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, I am the Old Humble Guy, your host, uh, spirit guide, bad influence, whatever you want to call me, I am that for the night. Uh, and this is the Old Humble Distilling Company's uh, Whiskey Happy Hour. And tonight we are doing, we're doing an Honest to God cocktail show. Uh, we take our opening shot. Tonight's opening shot is our double oak straight rye. And our cocktail show today is talking about the old fashioned, the, the classic old fashioned, the drink that is literally named for what it is. It is an old fashioned cocktail, uh, arguably one of the first cocktails, if not the first cocktail ever invented. And we're talking about the old-fashioned, that cocktail tonight. Uh, and in fact, I'm going to compare two different styles of making the old-fashioned. Uh, we're going to do the, the, the original, traditional, handmade style. Uh, you know, using ice and spoons and muddling everything up. And I'm also going to compare it to the mix. I have this uh, Barsmith old-fashioned mix. Uh, we use it at the distillery. We, uh, I use it around the house, uh, especially when I'm lazy and I don't want to mess with actually making drinks. Uh, I do that. Uh, occasionally, I don't want to. Occasionally, I am lazy, and I don't want to sit there and uh, uh, mix drinks and do stuff. So, you know, all I do is uh, take a spoon, take, a, take a, a drip of the spoon, and dump it in there, and boom. Uh, CNT Designs in the house. Cheers, CNT Designs. Uh, and ammo, welcome to the party. Oh, I haven't taken my first shot yet. Opening shot for the night. Cheers uh, to all y'all out there in internet lands. That is our double oak straight rye. I've been making the rounds the past two months, uh, going to specs and total wines, uh, giving out samples and uh, signed bottles of our whiskey. I've been to uh, at least 10 stores, nine. Let's see here. Uh, I've got. Next week, I've got one, two, oh no, I've got one more on Friday. One, two, three stores that I'm going to. Oh, where am I going to be on Friday? That's Friday. Where am I going to be on Friday? What? I've got to be doing something Friday. Hmm. Anyway. Um, hmm. No, wait, that's Saturday. What's going on? Hmm. All right. Well, anyway, uh, so we've got three more stores, uh, so that we, which means I've visited 10 stores. One store I visited twice. We've been pushing the whiskey. We've been selling it. People are loving it. I'm very excited, uh, which also means I have a bunch of bottles that are like half full. Today, uh, I was at a store on the west side, very far west side of town, like an hour away from here, and then an hour away from the second store that I went to. Uh, I think I might have only given away like 10 samples. I sold five bottles of whiskey, but I think I only gave away, so that bottle's like only this much as 
taken out of that model. Anyway, uh, so there, yeah, Friday uh, we'll be at uh, the Humble Total Wine up here in Humble, Texas. Uh, Monday, the Memorial Total Wine, and Tuesday I will be at the Lower Heights Total Wine and the Sugarland Total Wine. So we got, I guess that's four more stores. That we, so I guess I've only been to nine stores, but I've been to one of them twice. Um, <clears throat> what other housekeeping stuff do we need to... Oh, yeah, this box right here over my right shoulder. This box right here is our uh, giveaway for the month of September. In this box, we have uh, some delightful candy that people need to know. Do I have that um, Do I have that graphic over here? Is this the graphic? Is that, the, is that the one right there? Ah, there it is. Those are three of our bottles. That's not the giveaway. What, is that the giveaway? Uh, nope, that's not the giveaway. That's the Wheel of Doom. That's the Friday Night's Live. What about that one? That's not it. Uh, I don't have the graphic. Oh, well, tough shit. Uh, this is, well, this is not the right graphic anyway. This is the sample bottles that we are giving away in September. It is our Straight Whiskey, Special Reserve, Double Oak Rye, and Boomtown Bourbon. Um, a, our, a style of our whiskey that most people don't have because it hasn't been available in the market since November 2019 when we moved out of our old shop. I haven't had a chance to make another batch, but we have another batch coming out in March of 2023. We've had some production delays. I was expecting it to come out in March of the, or winter of this year, but it's not going to be until spring of next year. Um, and I also have a cigar from a national cigar brand, international cigar brand. It is, it's a very good cigar. You'll enjoy that cigar. And if you don't like cigars, just toss it in the trash. Whatever you want to do. I don't care. Uh, Bad X Bourbon's in the house. Cheers, Bad X Bourbon. Uh, and just so you know, the way you enter into this drawing on September, the week of September 15th, that week between the 11th and the 17th, somewhere in there, probably the 15th on that weekend, uh, you come on to a, you come to a live show that we're doing, like this one, you comment and chat like these guys are doing over here to my left and down below if you're looking at it on a phone, or probably over here if you're looking at it on a laptop, I think that's, yeah, I think that's where it's at. Um, that gets your name in, onto the Wheel of Doom and Glory. The Wheel of Doom and Glory is a wheel that we will spin. Zzz, spin it one time. Name comes up. That person wins. They win that box right there. Right there. Um, <clears throat> it's as easy as that. Just like that. We have a... Uh, uh, every time you come onto a live and get into our chat, you get your name on the wheel. On Thursday nights, we have trivia. Get Come in, participate in trivia, you get on the wheel. If you win trivia, you get four slices on the wheel, four additional slices on the wheel. Second place, you get two slices. Third place, you get an extra slice. Uh, and that's how easy it is to get onto the wheel of doom and glory and get uh, your name in the mix to win our special sample pack of whiskeys. And this is a sample pack of whiskeys that you will be in possession of that, that like literally nobody else outside of Texas would have all four of these whiskeys at the same time. And I'm fairly sure, certain that nobody in the state of Texas actually has all of these, except for me. I may be the only person who has simultaneously straight whiskey, special reserve, double oak, and Boomtown bourbon. You could be the only other person in the universe that has this. Uh, I don't know if it's a special honor. I don't think it's a special honor. It's a cool thing to have. Uh, you can show that off and show other people. Uh, so people whose names are getting on the wheel as of tonight, uh, CNT Designs, Goddamn Bacon, um, uh, <laughs> the cocktail women on dating apps know how to make. Yeah, they know how to make old old fashions. Apparently, uh, if that if that's what you uh, that's what you say. Uh, Bad Axe Bourbon will be on the wheel. Uh, Mike McClune is on the wheel. In fact, I'm going to write these names down right now. Uh, just in case we decide to go till three in the morning again, and uh, I need to, uh, uh, I think these are the names from last Thursday. So uh, C and T Designs, Goddamn Bacon, and my wife is going to be the determiner of which one is good. Or which one is better than the other? Bourbon. Um, I, I'm I'm gonna want to unpack what you said there, Bacon. Like people, chicks on dating app say that they know how to make a old fashioned cocktail. Why is that a selling point? I don't I don't understand why that would be a uh, feature for <laughs> a feature for dating apps. Uh, 
I mean, whatever. If that's what they think, that's what they want to sell themselves with. I mean, that's fair. Um, what's not fair? Uh, I missed something. What's not fair? Not available in California. Yeah, it's not available in California yet. Uh, I am working on that. I had a, I had some paperwork that I got set up to, uh, to push the whiskey in California, but then a bunch of stuff changed here on the home front, and I haven't been able to pursue pushing it out to California. California, Colorado, uh, California, Colorado, Florida. There's a bunch of places I kind of want to push it out to, and I kind of want to focus on California first because they've got good outlets that I can go for uh, and a whole bunch of people there. Um, but, well, uh, I'm working on that. I'm working on it. We've got, a, we've got 35 million thirsty people in 32 thirsty people, 32 million 30 thirsty people in Texas. Uh, we'll get to the 30-something million in California next. Uh, I'm working on it. I know you're not far away from a total wine. A total wine is going to be the target of where we send our stuff to when it comes to uh, when it comes to shipping that stuff out. Total wine in California, uh, Florida, um, New Jersey. I think there's one in only one in New York, if I'm not mistaken. But uh, ah, we'll see. We will see. We will work on it. We will get it done. It's just a matter of time. An organization and patience. Uh, so there you go. Also, we're we're uh, full on to the march for a thousand subscribers. We're floating around six. Where are we at? Six eighty six right now. Uh, we're six eighty six. We're floating around that six eighty five to six ninety range. Should possibly maybe be at seven hundred by the end of the month. I'm not holding my breath. Uh, we'll see if that happens. Maybe maybe not. Uh, and also the update on the 100,000 subscribers, we are now going for the full 100,000 since February, because uh, we passed the 100,000 mark of lifetime views. Now we're going for the 100,000 since February, and then I'll do the update video of how we did it, why we did it, and when we, uh, and, and, and how it apply, how, how it changed our channel, what it did, how it changed my channel, and how I approached my channel, uh, and my, um, my videos and the, the prep work for the videos. Um, so there you go. Um, funny enough, Total Wine is where I do your booze shopping. Probably still pay to have you ship it because most draconian liquor. Yeah, uh, we, I can't ship it through Total Wine either. Total Wine won't ship it from Texas to uh, to other stores that don't carry it. It has to actually be carried in, uh, in that state or in that um, uh, area. Uh, you know, I, Texas will not allow the distillery to ship whiskey, but me personally, I can send whiskey peer to peer individually. And I have an allotment from my marketing department, which is me. Uh, I have an allotment of whiskey that I can send out, uh, across the country and I will, I will, you know, for the, for the, you know, we'll work it out. We'll, we'll Vin, we, Venmo has stuff that, that allows us to do it. Uh, we're good. Uh, and yeah, bad acts. I don't, I, I mean, I expect we'll be at a uh, hundred thousand probably by the end of, or a hundred thousand, a uh, thousand subs by the end of the year. Probably maybe, uh, it would be a really cool new year celebration. Uh, if we had a thousand subs by the end of the year, I would do full on a thousand fireworks for new years to celebrate thousand subscribers and then fight a kangaroo. Um, but we'll see. Uh, I'm not, I'm not so much worried about hitting the thousand subscriber mark. I'm more interested in the views because the views uh, directly correlate, you know, when we have our guests and we have our live music on Fridays, which will be starting back up in September. Uh, when we have our live music, uh, the guests, the guests, you know, the, the guests, the bands, the brands get uh, the benefit of the views. I'm not so much worried about the monetization aspect. That'd be cool. Uh, but, you know, I don't really need Mothers Against Drunk Driving advertising on my videos, and uh, or Jack Daniels or uh, Geico. I don't really give a shit about all that. Uh, but there you go. Uh, the, the, I may, uh, we'll see. I'll, I may pursue the monetization, but I'm not. I'm not uh, I don't know. I'm not worried about that. I, you know, the, sub, the subs is a nice, uh, nice trophy to get. An absolutely nice trophy to get. Um, but let's get to the uh, cocktails, shall we? Uh, we're at, yeah, we're about the 10, 20, the 20 minute mark. Uh, let's do the cocktails. Okay. So first off, hang on, let me go back to the uh, title screen. Uh, we'll go to the title screen real quick. Uh, right here. Oops. Man, 
ladies and gentlemen, brothers, sisters, children of all ages. Uh, you know, I did that. I went back to the title screen so that maybe I could clip this segment out. But I've still got the, the vestiges of the live stream on it. Maybe I should, like, turn that off. That's what I should do. I should have another screen. All right, I'll just re-record this shit later. No worries. All right, so this is what we're going to do. All right, so important things to remember when you're making a cocktail. I've got my glasses. You need something to put the cocktail in. For They're the home bartenders that get all snobby and, and pretentious about, you know, the glassware. It needs to be a proper type of glassware. I mean, if you're, if you're at a bar, like, the glassware matters, right? Because you want it to be good presentation when you're at a bar, right? Uh, you want the glass to be all crystal, shiny, clean, and polished, and... You know, you want to see your bartender there doing, you know, doing this, cleaning the bottles and cleaning the glasses and making sure they're not dirty and like that. You see that? That's got fingerprints all over. I mean, these are my home glasses. This is what I have in my, uh, it's not even in my bar. It's in my uh, Christina's Creative Space. Is that the, is that Moosecow? Christina's Creative Space is Moosecow? You've changed your, uh. You've changed your uh, uh, avatar and a screen name. Brava. That's pretty cool. Uh, so, yeah, you want, um, at a bar, you want it to matter. You, I mean, all this stuff matters because it's all about presentation. But if it's your home bar, you know, nobody gives a shit. I mean, really. You're there with your buddies. You're drinking a couple of cocktails. They're not going to be all like, you've got smudges on your glasses. And if they do... Screw them. Like, tell them to just to fucking leave and make their own drinks. Uh, and quit being dickheads. <laughs> like, for real. Um, and they also say the same thing about, uh, you know, ice. Like, my ice is not clear ice. It is cloudy ice because, again, doesn't really matter. I'm the one drinking it. It's my bar. Um, nobody's going to look at your home bar and go, oh, your ice is cloudy. It tastes the same. It doesn't melt any differently. It melts about the same. Now, it is important, though, that your ice is made of the same water that you use, or the water that you use in your cocktail, if you have a water mix, is the same water for your ice. You don't want your ice to be tap water, and your or your ice to be distilled water, and then you put tap water in your uh, cocktail. That's dumb. Use the same water. If you're using distilled water for your ice, use distilled water for your uh, for your mixer, for your add-in. So if you're doing whiskey and water, don't use tap water. Use the filtered water or the distilled water. And if you're making ice with filtered water, you put filtered water in your drinks. But that's all. That's, that's more of a taste because uh, if you get the tap water, you could get some flavors coming in from the tap that you wouldn't get from the ice. And if you go through the trouble to use filtered distilled water uh, for your ice, you should at least go through the trouble to do the same thing with your, uh, uh, with the water in your actual drink. Uh, so first things first, let's do the mix. Th these mixes are easy. Um, you do, it's, uh, what is it? It's an ounce of, uh, no, it's two ounces of whiskey and one ounce of, of um rye so it's two ounces of, two ounces of whiskey this is the proper uh measuring thing that is an ounce and a half right there and this is a half ounce here so that's two ounces there and then it's one ounce of this stuff which is it's just bar smith old-fashioned mixer that's all it is it's nothing um you know it's not uh super duper fancy it's it's the normal stuff i just <laughs> just about spilled it all over the damn floor uh <laughs> this is one also one of the reasons why i do not uh normally do cocktails this is an ounce or a half ounce plus a half ounce there we go that's that that's the bar mix and then you throw in some uh uh, bitters, and I've got uh, the bitters that I have are the uh, uh, orange flavored bitters. Now the bitters are simply uh, there. It, it's an alcohol base with 
some florals and botanicals and uh, uh, flavorings that are added in there. Usually it's aged, sometimes in a barrel. Uh, these were used for medicine back in the back in the day, back in the early 16, 17, 1800s. These are used as medicinal. Uh, some of them are aromatic. I've got walnut bitters. I've got chocolate bitters. I've got orange bitters. Uh, you can get celery bitters, uh, jalapeno bitters. You can do all kinds of stuff with bitters. Bitters are a, a, a very interesting, flavorful type of thing, and you and you add it to the drink. Uh, just a couple dashes. I like to add a lot of flavor uh, when we're doing this. And then you take a chunk of ice, and you drop it into... Take the chunk of ice, like so, drop it in, stir it so that it gets nice and cool, and there you go. It's, it's simple, just like that. That's that. Now, the um, traditional method, let me take a sip of this, because it's a delightful drink. It's a little syrupy. When it comes to, because it's uh, uh, the bar mate stuff is, huh, my SD card. Uh, this bar mate stuff is basically just simple syrup that is, uh, where'd the lid go to this thing? It's simple syrup that is uh, flavored with the, with, with whatever they flavor old fashions with what they flavor old fashioned, I have no idea. Um, I'm gonna have to find the lid to that. It's around here somewhere. It'll turn up, I'm not worried about it. Um, but the traditional method, the traditional method is, uh, this is the way they made it back in 1809 when these were originally made. You take a, instead of using simple syrup, you take a cube of ice, bloop like so. You take your bitters and you saturate the cube of ice, like so. Get it in there, you saturate the cube of ice and make sure that it is good and juiced. So that's good and juiced. It is till it, so that it's almost fallen apart. Make sure it's got plenty of flavor or uh, plenty of bitters on there. You don't have to do too much. Uh, you know, I usually tell people to flavor it to taste. Um, now, I've seen people add the cherry to um, uh, to the drink in the, in the traditional, um, and then muddle it with the. I'm going to take the stem off of this, then muddle it in there. Take that out. So I'm going to go ahead and do that with this, and then just a like a teaspoon of water. Although that was two, uh, that was it was a full uh, ounce. So I'm going to go ahead and take an ounce of water so that we have the same amount of stuff. And like like I said, use the same water that you make your ice with. So this is literally ice melt that I'm throwing in there. Uh, I've seen recipes call for anywhere between a tablespoon to an ounce to a dash, um, enough to make the ice melt, but you want to smash this up, and I don't so much like that because, you know, you smash up fruit inside your drink and then you just have garbage in your uh, drink that you have to drink around. I don't like garnishes, I don't like any of that crap, because I don't usually have, you know, random oranges and lemons and limes and stuff just hanging around the house who does right uh but but to muddle this up all i'm doing is using the back of my spoon to get the flavors out of the cherry and and make sure that the uh and make sure that the uh, ice cube is crushed up and properly stirred Make sure the cherry is mushed good. I don't have a muddler. I thought about getting a muddler for this, but I did not. All right, so there's no more, there's no more, there's no more, uh, I'm gonna take the cherry out of here. 
because I really don't like having trash in my drink, so I'm taking the cherry out uh, and putting it in that shot glass right there. Uh, <laughs> that'll work out. So what I'm left with is this kind of a, a sweet cherry juice. And now the part that makes the drink the drink, a little bit of the rye. Now talk about the history of the old fashioned. 1809 is when these started being made originally. There we go. And in 1809, it was before bourbon was even in, uh, a thing. There was the bourbon county process, but not bourbon itself. One piece of ice, one big block of ice rather. All right, now stirring it, there we go. Now, just based on color between these two, just based on color, the Barmates is darker. This is the handmade one. This is the Barmates. Um, I'm throwing another couple dashes of bitters. That's it. Just another couple dashes, not a whole lot. Um, let me get my taste tester in here real quick. Hold on one second. <laughs> she hates it when I do that. <laughs> See if she comes. See if she comes without murdering me, because that'll be nice. Not getting murdered would be a nice thing. Uh, hopefully, uh, I don't see her yet. Hang on, let me text her real quick. She won't answer. Whistle one more. Should I whistle one more time? What do you think, chat? Should I whistle one more time? You think she'll come if I whistle one more time? Hi, Bimbo Barbarella. Welcome to the party. Now, I'm going to have to text her. <laughs> See me, please. See? See, I even say please. I'm so nice. All right. Let's see, she, she'll be the final arbiter on which one's which. This is, again, the dark one, barmates. The lighter one, the redder one, is the uh, handmade. And that's got a deep, rich flavor to it. It tastes like more whiskey. More whiskey flavor. And I use the same amount of whiskey in each one, same amount of water in each one. I think I like mine. I don't know. I'm gonna have to. I'm gonna have to let my wife decide which one's better. See if she actually makes it. She will be the final arbiter. She'll take one away, and I'll be left with the other one, and that'll be fine for everybody. Um, but as far as the history of the old fashioned goes, uh, originally around 1809, 1808, 1809 was when the original drink was being made. There were bitters, there was water, there was sugar, there was whiskey. And that was kind of, uh, it, it, was a, it was a cocktail that was put together, and that's, that's how it was originally consumed. There were variations over the year using gin, using vodka, using rum, using all kinds of different, uh, 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 different uh, liquors, but it was always basically the same. Uh, alcohol, bitters, sugar, water, garnish with a orange, uh, garnish with a cherry, uh, something to that effect, and that was your that was that was the way the cocktails in general were being made. Then right around the eighteen, they kind of fell out of fashion for a while. We had this, you know, kerfluffle, this war between the states thing for a little while. Then there was like this post-war <laughs> uh, period. Uh, right around the 1880s, this the 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 trend of cocktails returned. There was a couple of different clubs that started making these cocktails up in New York, uh, and they both vied for one in uh, New York, one in Kentucky, and they were both uh, historically have vied for the person uh, the the bar that invented the old fashioned, uh, but they didn't really invent it. They just repurposed an old drink that had already existed in the past. Um, I don't, I don't know if she's going to make it in here. Uh, let me try one more time. 
uh, I know what I can do. She'll she'll ignore me, but she won't ignore her phone. I'm gonna make her phone boop at her. That'll be funny. She's gonna come in here and yell at me. <laughs> uh, so these two bars kind of repurposed it. Uh, people started requesting the cocktail, but they were requesting the cocktail made in the old-fashioned way. The old-fashioned way being whiskey, water, sugar, bitters. And by now, they were still using rye because bourbon had not yet been defined by law. Bourbon wasn't defined by law until the, 19, the early 1900s. So in the late 1800s, it was still rye as our predominant style of whiskey. So it was historically, traditionally, originally done with rye whiskey. Um, she fell asleep on the couch. <laughs> I just heard her. <laughs> I just heard her in the other room. Um, I'm gonna come in here and yell at me. It's gonna be awesome. Uh, so that's that was. The, hello, my sweet. Would you like to taste test a couple of cocktails for me? All right, Mrs. Old Humble Guy is here. She's joined the party. She's ready to taste test a couple of cocktails. Uh, try this one. She doesn't want to come on the screen, though, because she's too pretty and she's going to break the camera with her gorgeousness. Mm -hmm. uh, also, when we break 700 subscribers, I'm going to shave her head when she's sleeping. You're not. I'm dye her hair blue while she's sleeping. All right. That's one. Very cherish. This is the other one. The first one she said was very cherish. Wah. The second one she said was wah. You want to try again? Yeah, and remember, one of them had a much stronger whiskey flavor. <laughs> Which one do you like better, my sweet? This is the one she likes better. This is the one I'm going to be left with. Guess which one was the one that I made, folks? Y'all know. Y'all remember. Y'all saw it. That's homemade? Yep. Wow. She liked the homemade one better than the mix. I thought the homemade one had a stronger whiskey flavor to yes. it. But the, the mix was lighter, but the, the sweetness was stronger. Oh, she can't drink it all. I'll, I guess I'll just have to drink them both. Um, so the homemade one was sweeter, has more. I'll drink some of it, but I can't drink all of it. It probably would have been probably would have been different if I muddled it. No, this is water. Oh. What are you doing, crazy? Just drink it. Right. <laughs> I fell asleep on the sofa. You I love, love you, my dear. I love you. Thank you. If you don't finish it, uh, no well, way. I can make another one. It's fine. Love you. Mwah. Love you, my wow. my sweetness. Have a great night. She picked the she picked the go she picked the one I made. <clears throat> totally gonna dye her hair blue when we hit 700 subscribers, but I'm gonna do it in her, while she's sleeping, which is gonna be even funnier. <laughs> it's gonna be even funnier to do it while she's sleeping because she won't even know it's dyed. I don't know if I could pull that off. Oh, maybe what I'll do is when she's sleeping and her hair's all out, I'll just like spray it with a hairspray. So when she wakes up, it'll just be like. She'll have bedhead all day. Maybe that's what I'll do. <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. We'll think of something to do at 700 subscribers. I haven't decided what to do yet. Uh, but we'll do something. Because it, it's a good milestone to reach. Uh, get this out of the way, too. Um, I don't know what... I don't have any more ice. So I'm probably not going to make another one. I'll probably just drink one straight. Anyway. Uh, so that was the origins of the Old Fashioned as a cocktail. In the late 1800s, 1880s. Uh, people were ordering cocktails made the old-fashioned way, and the old-fashioned way was whiskey, rye whiskey, specifically rye whiskey, because that's what they had. That was the predominant whiskey in the land. Rye whiskey, sugar, water, bitters. That's it. Now, if you are familiar with the mint julep, you know that the mint julep is also whiskey, water, and uh, sugar, but also peppermint 
or mint, whatever mint they use to, for a mint julep. Um, and that is also an old fashioned type of cocktail. Instead of using bitters, they use mint. Uh, the mint is muddled in with the sugar in a traditional sense. It's muddled in with the sugar, water's added <clears throat> to make it the simple syrup, and then there's the whiskey that's added on top of it. Uh, mint juleps, however, are traditionally used with or made with bourbon, uh, and Woodford Reserve is a very popular bourbon to use with a mint julep. It's the official whiskey of the Kentucky Derby, da 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 all the stuff. Um... Yeah, that syrup's a lot thicker with this one. Um, but just using the ice cube and the water. Now, speaking of the simple syrup, variations that you can do with a old-fashioned, and, and same way that you can use water and mint and sugar to make a mint julep, you can do the same type of thing with an old-fashioned. Instead of using a sugar cube and water, all you need to do is make some homemade simple syrup. Making homemade simple syrup is way, way, way easier than you think. Anything can be made, anything that's made of sugar can be turned into a simple syrup. All you have to do is take that thing, put it in water, and boil it. All simple syrup is, is sugar, water, boiled down to make a concentrated kind of, not, a, not quite a syrup, but a thicker, well, I mean, it is a syrup, it's a simple syrup, but kind of a, a it's thicker than sugar water, but it's not as thick as maple syrup, right? So you can take, for example, a peanut butter cup, which is sugar, peanut butter, chocolate. Take it, put it in water, boil it down, put it in a, a cup of water, boil it down till you get about a half a cup. And now you have a thick, uh, simple syrup that's peanut butter and chocolate flavored. And you can make a peanut butter chocolate old fashioned with peanut. And instead of using uh, orange bitters, use uh chocolate bitters or uh, they probably have peanut bitter uh, peanut bitters uh you can take um brown sugar instead of sugar sugar uh instead of white sugar use brown sugar nutmeg ginger all uh anise um and cinnamon throw all that stuff into your pot Boil it down from a cup of water down to about a half a cup of water. And now you have pumpkin spice. You have a pumpkin spice simple syrup. Pumpkin spice old fashions for your basic bitch tendencies in the fall and winter. Um, <laughs> uh, you can use uh, cocoa powder to make a hot cocoa old fashioned. You can use um, graham crackers or vanilla. You, well, if you want to, you can, you, you can crunch up graham crackers, uh, 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 do, uh, those fluffy white marshmallows and a bit of chocolate, boil it down in, in a cup of water, boil it down to about a half a cup. And now you've got a s'mores old fashioned. You can do all kinds of stuff using, uh, using your spice cabinet and some sugar, different types of sugar, either white sugar, uh, or, um, white sugar or uh, brown sugar in order to make old fashions that have a flavor unique to what you want to do, unique for your season. You can have a whole, a whole rack of simple syrups in your refrigerator for different purposes. You can, you can do, um, you can do blueberry muffin old fashions, uh, by taking, uh, uh, some blueberries, sugar, water, boil it down, strain it out, Boom, now you have blueberry simple syrup. Anything you can make simple syrup out of. Grenadine is another uh, uh, popular simple syrup flavor. Grenadine is just pomegranates. Uh, you can make pomegranate simple syrup. Use pomegranates, water, uh, and uh, uh, throw in some herbs like uh, rosemary. And now you can make a, a Grand Canyon Old Fashioned, which use, it's an old fashioned. Instead of using simple syrup, they use uh, this... At the, at the Grand Canyon, instead of using simple syrup, they use this homemade um, uh, homemade simple syrup using uh, pomegranates, but it's basically grenadine. Boom. Now you have grenadine. You can make uh, watermelon old-fashions. You can do pineapple old-fashions. All kinds of stuff that you can do. 
because the simple syrup is so versatile. And then you just choose bitters to complement the flavor in the simple syrup. And now you can take your old fashioned and really spread it out and really do all kinds of cool things with your old fashioned. And it doesn't just have to be a stodgy old drink that's that's served up in wood paneled uh, studies with leather chairs and cigar smoke clinging to the draperies, which, mind you, sounds fucking fantastic. But it doesn't have to be that. It can be all kinds. Of, it can be so much more. Um, so there you go. Uh, the history of an old fashioned. And the title of this video was how to drink an old fashioned. And the way you drink, the, the proper way to drink an old fashioned is just like this. Watch, watch, watch. See this, this hole right here. Proper way to drink an old fashioned. That's it. Goes in that hole. Any other hole, you're doing it wrong. <laughs> right there. That's the only way, the proper way to drink an old fashioned or any other cocktail for that matter. Uh, goes in there. That's it. How to drink an old fashioned with your mouth. So there you go. From my test kitchen to yours, uh, ex explore, experiment, find uh, cocktails that you like, find whiskeys that you like. The best thing to do, um, God, there was a guy looking for recommendations on whiskeys the other day on one of the, one of my dumb whiskey forums that I participate in. And he's like, what should I go find? And everybody's like, get well or get, get bullet. I was like, dude, look for something that you've never tried before. Look for something you've never seen before. Look for something you've never heard of before. The whiskey aisle is full of awesome stuff. Explore. Get one you know. Get one you like. Every time you go to the store, get one you know. Get one you like. And get something else. Something you've never heard of before. Something you've never seen before. Explore and find stuff that's just awesome. Uh, you might strike out a few times, but you might also find some stuff that's really, really fucking amazing. Um, and that, is, that, my friends, is uh, probably the best whiskey advice that I've ever been given. And uh, I'm sharing it now with you. And do the same thing with your cocktails. Do stuff, I mean, you know, pour yourself a drink that you know you're going to like. But every once in a while, uh, experiment with something. And uh, you learn a lot from the stuff you hate. You learn a lot from the stuff you hate. Uh, Mountain Dew and whiskey is about the ass shittiest drink I've ever had in my life. <laughs> you learn a lot from the stuff you hate, but you really, uh, it helps to, it, it, and, and the stuff, when you drink the stuff you hate, it really, really helps inform you of why you like the stuff you like. <laughs> if you can, if you can think your way through why you hate something, it, it, you, it can really steer you towards the stuff you like to drink and why you like to drink it. And you can understand your own personal preference. And that's. Uh, that's as important as anything else. So there you go. Cheers to all of y'all. And now that is the end of the first half of the show. And now let's get on to the second half of the show, shall we? Let's get on with the uh, Old Humble After Dark live chat. Um, my chat box isn't open. I still got the Spiro Agnew thing on. I knew I was forgetting something. Uh, let's close that. Get rid of that. Yeah, there it is. Get rid of that. Dumbness. Uh, okay. Um, and, you know, I tried to trim down last week's show and put it out. I did. I trimmed it down. I edited it down to a, like, 25-minute segment uh, with an intro and with an outro. Um, but, man, once I posted it, I just didn't like it. And so I took it back down. Oh, fuck it. Um, but now's the time on the show where I try to catch up on chat. And we just let the conversation go where the conversation's going to go. Uh... You know, there's been a lot of fun stuff in the news lately. Uh, I'm more than game to tackle some of that nonsense. Also, uh, I'm going to answer all the questions that I can find. Uh, Amy Bohm. Hey, Amy Bohm. Cheers from 21090. Welcome to the party, 21090. Awesome. Uh, okay, and I'm also going to write down names as I see them uh, to make sure that we have everybody on the list for... Where's my pencil? There it is. Everybody on the list for the drawing in September. Um, so Mike is there. Bad X Bourbon is there. Amy. Boom. B-O-E-H-M. Amy. B-O-E. And again, this drawing is for our sample box. But now I'm going to paint this box. It's going to look pretty. Uh, add our logo. Do all kinds of stuff to it. But this is a sample of four whiskeys. Our sh starting from my... Uh, my right are straight whiskey, special reserve, double oak rye, and Boomtown bourbon. The Boomtown bourbon being a traditional tri-grain whiskey, which almost nobody 
uh, has had, at least nobody on the show, I think, our Boomtown Bourbon right there. There you are. Um, it is a traditional tri-grain Kentucky-style bourbon that's aged in five-gallon barrels in the Kentucky or uh, in the Texas temperatures and Texas climates here in the Gulf Coast. Uh, it is, I mean, I don't want to oversell it, but it will make you pregnant. Uh, that's how good it is. Uh, and of course, a uh, cigar from a national tobacconist. Um, a national tobacconist, it is a delightful cigar, quite fine. Uh, and like I've said before, get in on the chat, you get your name on the wheel of doom and glory. Uh, participate in trivia, you get your name on the doom and glory, oh, wheel of doom and glory. Win, win at trivia, you get four slices. Uh, second place gets two, third place gets one. That's how you get your name. You can have your name on the Wheel of Doom and Glory dozens of times. And there are folks who have their name on the Wheel of Glory dozens of times already. Um, it is, um, it's fun for the whole family. And then we will spin that wheel, uh, in the middle of September. I will, uh, I will give plenty of notice. You'll get four or five days notice. Uh, of when we're going to spin it, I will I will tee that show up. I'll prom I'll promote it. I'll have it in the uh, I'll have it in our community tab. I'll tell people you must be present to win. I'm going to spin that wheel, and if you're not there, uh, may God have mercy on your soul, because the next person up is going to be the person to win that uh, uh, win that. So so hit the notification bell. Hit uh, subscribe. Hit the notification bell. Uh, set a reminder on your calendar, set a meeting time, make sure you're there. Cause if you win this, if your name comes up on this and you're not there, you're going to hate yourself and your grandkids are going to mock you. It, I, I don't make the rules. Well, actually I do make the rules. I don't make the content. I don't, I, I guess I do make the consequences. Um, I don't, I'm not going to force your grandkids to mock you, but they're going to do it anyway. They're going to be like, you could have had the four pack and you'll be like, yeah, yeah. They're going to be all, granddad needs to go into the home. That's, uh, that's how it's going to be. Uh, that's how it's going to be. So there you go. Um, Christina's creative space. Uh, cool. Yeah, we can talk about it offline, Christina. Christina's creative space. Space. Cool. Um, uh, yeah, and actually, Nightbot is pretty cool. Uh, I haven't, I haven't done much maintenance on Nightbot, but, uh, it's been nice and convenient, uh, reminds people of where to find us everywhere else and to subscribe and do all those cool things. Um, Amy Bourbon, uh, just posted a same handle. Hmm? Oh, okay. Gotcha. Um, did, did it again. Algorithm. Anything else that I need to see? Did I miss any names? I didn't. I don't think I missed any names. Did I? I I, I skipped ahead, didn't I? All right. Make sure I've got. Uh, I didn't miss any names. I don't. I want to make sure I didn't miss any names. I didn't miss any names. Good. Okay. Uh, so now we scroll forward. Um. All right. Uh, looking, looking, looking. This is where I was. I was deep in the uh, uh, ices. Yeah, I, I, see, this is this is why I made my. Uh, uh, this is this is exactly why I made that short regarding the ice because I saw somebody doing a short on how to make clear ice. I'm like, who gives a shit how you make clear ice? But I had never actually thought about uh, just taking a, 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 a Tupperware container or an old, it was an old lunch meat container, filling it with water and sticking it in there and making big fat chunks of ice out of it. I'd never thought about doing that. It works just fine. It works just fine. It works just as fine making six big fat chunks of ice out of an old meat container as it does uh, spending, I don't know, whatever it was, $9, $15, $20 on a, uh, a, a four pack of squares for ice. And I'm not a big fan of that four pack that I got because it's, it's a soft rubber and when the ice freezes, it kind of expands out and it pushes the walls out. So it's not perfect cubes. It's like perfect cubes with bulging sides or cubes with bulging sides. And it kind of annoys me. Um, but yeah, I mean, for the, 
for the most part, you know, ice is ice. The only thing that's going to be different with your ice that's going to matter is what you make, what water you make it out of. So if you boil it and get some of the um, uh, impurities out of the water, the ice might taste better when it melts. But for most people, you're not going to notice because it's drowned in uh, alcohol or you're used to the taste of your water anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Uh, I did notice the difference when we started using rainwater versus tap water at the distillery. I noticed the difference in the taste of the water and I noticed the difference in the taste of the whiskey when we were making it, but if I had never changed, I never would have noticed it. I, I never would have known that there was a difference to be noticed, if you know what I mean. Um, so there you go. Um, Pennsylvania will go private. Um, yeah, it's a government-run state. It sucks. It, it's it's hard to get into Pennsylvania too, for from a distiller's point of view. Uh, Norton, fuck off. Norton just opened up on my damn computer. Shut up, Norton. Um, Bimbo Barbarella's in the house. Cheers, Bimbo. Uh, add you to the list. I said that earlier, didn't I? Bimbo. Bimbo Barbarella. In the house. Sweet. 18% to alcohol sold in Pennsylvania. Uh, bacon. Ice or... Okay, I'm not sure what that's in regards to, but uh, when you start with the old-fashioned, you start with the sugar. You muddle the sugar and the cherry and uh, all the stuff first, and then you add the ice. Um, and I, I added the ice after uh, the whiskey, and you just kind of stir it around to chill it, and then uh, you stir it around to chill it, and the, and, and the idea would be to chill the entire uh, cocktail. Uh, so there you go. But sugar cubes are great treats too. If you if you have a sweet tooth, <laughs> it's like a what is that? A teaspoon of sugar, a tablespoon of sugar, something like that. Um, I've never I've never had a reason to own sugar cubes in my life, and now I think I have a several lifetime uh, supply of these things. I don't think I will ever use all of these. Uh, my hunch is I'm going to get through about a third or a fifth of this, and then uh, something's going to happen, and they're all going to get destroyed. Uh, that's an insane amount of sugar cubes. I've never never in my life have I had a need to own that many sugar cubes. It's insane. Um, uh, one thing, gentlemen, that you need to keep in mind is if, uh, the, if the liquor goes private, those taxes are going to get captured by your by your uh, private companies. Your, your liquor price isn't going to go down. It's going to stay the same and possibly go up a little bit. Uh, that tax that you're paying is going to just get incorporated into the price of the of the alcohol. Hate to burst your bubble. <laughs> That's just how it's going to be. Um, uh, what, I drive to Ohio, West Virginia for a booth run. <laughs> Nick Nepper in the house. Cheers, Nick. Nick Nepper. Um, my opinion on booze stones versus cubes or ice. <sighs> That's a good question. I like ice. Uh, I like ice. It's more efficient at cooling a drink. Um, it's less likely to chip your glass and it's less likely to chip your tooth. I have a pair of, uh, stainless booze balls. I also have a set of stainless of, I'm sorry, um, uh, marble booze stones, but I prefer, I prefer ice cubes. They, they main, they, they keep their temperature, they keep their temperature longer than the stones and the, the spheres. The stones and spheres tend to, uh, you know, I mean, they start off obviously freezing. You pull them out of the freezer, they're freezing. You put them in your drink, and then they they, they seem to warm up fast, and they don't effectively cool the, the drink. Uh, at least that's been my experience. That's one of the reasons why I'm not a big fan. Um, they, they, and and part of the part of the process of the the cocktail is that the ice is going to melt over time. 
and it's going to continue to dilute the drink and it becomes weaker and weaker and weaker as you continue to drink it. And it, but it also changes the flavor. It also gives you an incentive to drink your fucking drink and not sit there and have it sit around on the, on the counter, uh, which is also why you don't want small pieces of ice because small pieces of ice are going to melt faster. You want big chunks of ice because big chunks of ice will hold their form and hold their shape and not melt as fast. They won't dilute your drink as fast. Um, but I suppose if you have a large stone, you know, one of the, one of the stones that are like that big, uh, the same size that these, uh, chunks of ice was at the beginning, they'll hold their temperature longer and they'll, they'll, uh, uh, maintain the, 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 they'll maintain their cold temperature longer and chill the drink more effectively. But I've just never, I've never really been a big fan. Um, I may get a set of large stones to sell at the distillery. Uh, hell, I may make a set of large stones to sell at the distillery. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, I've got some ideas for Christmas time to have little uh, merch packets. Uh, we'll, we'll, it's That's a possibility. Uh, I don't really have a strong opinion either way. If you give me a drink that has a booze stone in it, I'll drink it. If you give me a drink that has a big chunk of ice in it, I'll drink it. If you, yeah, I mean, I'll drink whatever you hand to me. If I'm going to make it myself, I'm probably going to use a big chunk of ice because I don't have a boost stone. If I had a boost stone, I might make a boost stone, uh, throw a boost stone in there. I might, I don't know. I haven't, I don't have any. So, you know, that's, that's my opinion. I don't have a strong opinion either way. Uh, you know, I, I kind of just don't care. Um, uh, I'm pretty sure that whistling is indeed a murdering affair. <laughs> Whistling is generally a murdering offense, but she was asleep, so she didn't hear me, so it was fine. Um, my kids, however, are whistle trained, uh, and it's and, and I, I set out to do this at an early age because if you yell their name in a public place, they may not be the only one with that name. They may not hear their name, or they may choose to ignore that name. But nobody whistles for their kids. And, and a whistle can slice through all the noise in a mall, in a crowded room. It can carry back and forth across a supermarket. Uh, a whistle will immediately alert them. And everybody's going to stop and everybody's going to look at you and your kids are going to come running to you because they know that they're being called. Uh, and my kids also have fairly common names. So, you know, I don't want a bunch of... Uh, <laughs> I, don't, I don't want a bunch of Johns coming to me when I go, John, and a bunch of like eight little shithead kids come running at me and not mine. Um, so yeah, my kids have been whistle trained from a very young age. Even now, uh, one of them's 16 and I can whistle and they'll stop and look over like, what? I thought you were calling me. Yeah. <laughs> I'd be like, no, I was just commenting on the ladies. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't whistle at girls. I'm a grown ass man. I don't have to whistle at girls. And I would get murdered if I did. <laughs> True story. <laughs> I would get straight up murdered. Um, <laughs> um, a war of northern aggression. No, I didn't mean the war of northern aggression. <laughs> it was a little, you know property dispute, <laughs> if you will, a little, uh, misunderstanding of the political nature and, uh, you know, no, <laughs> that's what they also called it here in Texas while we, uh, uh, when I was in high school or middle school, I think mid eighties as recently as the mid eighties, they called it that shit. It's unbelievable. Uh, anyway, didn't a lot of cocktails come out during prohibition? Yes. There were a lot of cocktails that came out during Prohibition. That was a that was a uh, a huge renaissance in the cocktail movement because there was a lot of really bad alcohol that was being made during Prohibition. Some of it was literally poison. Um, but they would make uh, not only would they make cocktails to cover the flavor of the terrible alcohol that was being produced during Prohibition, a lot of it was gin. Uh, but they also made cocktails to make their drinks extend farther. Uh, if you take a shot of a shot of alcohol and add uh, 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 12 ounces of 
apple cider or soda or whatever. It's the difference between a cocktail and a glass like this and a cocktail and a glass like this, you know, um, or a shot, a shot glass and a full on pint of some kind of cocktail that you, uh, concoct and create. Then, you know, you have fish bowls of margaritas and, and, um, or, or gin and tonics and fish bowls of, you know, just giant drinks that they can like sip on all night and dispose of in a hurry if they needed to, because they just, uh, weren't that big of a deal. Square table is in the house. What up? Square table. Table. Dgens. Sweet. Good to see you in the party, brother. Um, you will keep me up, but, uh, oh, <laughs> That's fair. Uh, that's fair. I'm glad you joined us. Uh, you get your name on the wheel again, uh, the Wheel of Doom and Glory, which we will be spinning in the middle of September in order to win this prize pack right here. What's in the box? What's in the box? Gwyneth Paltrow's head. No, um, Gwyneth Paltrow is a lovely lady. Her head is not in a box. It was just a movie. That is our sample pack of four, count them, four different samples of whiskey. I have a picture of that somewhere. Um... Let me see. It's, it's not. Is that it? No, that's not it. Is this it? No, that's not. It. I don't have it on this screen. Uh, I have it. I have it somewhere. I just don't have it here. Deal with it. Uh, <clears throat> anyway, um, tradition. Uh, traditional made. There it is. Traditional made and one with a cocktail premix. Oh, that's what you got. Yeah, bacon. Um, you were in an elevator in the app crashed when you were describing the cocktail okay so i had two cocktails this one was the pre-mixed cocktail see how much darker it is how dark it is uh, my lovely wife took the one that was lighter in color and it was actually had heavier alcohol flavor and that is because i used sugar and water instead of a simple syrup uh what i used oh i was looking for the lid to this the lid is on this that's why i couldn't find the lid it was already on it I'd lose my damn head if it wasn't tied to my neck. Um, but this is the, I used this uh, Bar Smith mix. Uh, I let my lovely wife choose which one she liked best. She liked the one that I made with water and sugar. This has a thicker syrup to it. Uh, it uh, more simple syrup. And uh, uh, probably uh, cherry flavor. To it as well. Uh, I could I could tell the difference. The one I made had had more of a whiskey flavor to it. Um, had more whiskey flavor to it and less mix flavor. So you know I don't know if I made it right, but my wife liked it better. So there's that. Uh, I. I <sighs> I don't know how I would have made it different. Maybe use less water, but if I had used less water, then there would have been less volume in the actual drink. And I, I wanted to make them both as equal to each other as I could make them. Uh, so there you go. Um, equal parts sugar and water, BTBRTS, uh, till sugar dissolves. Right. Um, and you know, if you don't pre-make the simple syrup, then it's just, uh, sugar and water. That's it. That's, and that's really all sugar is. It's just, uh, sugar and water. Um, and if you boil it, it makes, it concentrates the sugar in the water, uh, so that the, uh, it's a little bit thicker than just water. That's, that's all. Um, we call it, <laughs> what do you call it when you use the ashes of your enemy and the tears of both? Sorrow than satisfaction. <laughs> what do I call it? <laughs> yeah, I think that sounds like a damn good cocktail is what that is. Um, I think you wouldn't need a mix, but... Uh, well, yeah, and that's the thing. You don't really need a mix. Uh, you don't really need a mix for this. Like I said, it's just, a, it's just sugar, water. Uh, but then it's the cherry that gets muddled in there. Um, that adds the flavor for the cherry and, you know, it's just one extra step. If you're sitting around chilling out, you got a bunch of, if you don't want to be the guy mixing drinks and making drinks and doing all that shit, an ounce of this, 
two ounces of this, you're done. That's it. That's all you really have to do. Um, so, it, it it's an ease of comfort. Um, it's it's just ease, and that's it. There's really not a need for a mix. And apparently, the mix doesn't really make it that much better. So, it's not, or the mix is not significantly better than uh, what you would other uh, than what you would otherwise do uh, traditionally by hand. Although I can tell you, it's not just drinking the two side by side. There's not a huge difference between the two. Um, it they, they taste pretty damn similar. And Corey Slater's on the wheel again. Corey Slater's on the wheel again. Uh, on September 20th, I don't know why I just thought of this. September 20th, we're going to be uh, hosting a comedy show here in or we're going to be sponsoring a comedy show here in Houston on the southeast side of town near Pasadena. So if you're in the Houston area on September 20th, you want to go to a comedy show, uh, I know a guy. So it'll be fun. Um, and I need to double check something else real quick while I'm here. And I have my papers in front of me. I wrote down the date. I'm hosting a podcast at the distillery on the, not that day, I'm hosting a podcast at the distillery on the 20, where is it, job interview for my son, pickup numbers, where's the damn job interview, or, uh, podcast that we're hosting nine today is september 24th 1 p.m on saturday 1 p.m on saturday means i should be able to do saturday's the 27th hot damn okay cool i just worked out a scheduling problem saturday is um saturday i'll be able to uh, and, 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 don't, never mind don't worry about it the podcast isn't open to the public. It's going to be fun, though. Uh, they're doing a cigar and whiskeys podcast at the distillery, and I get to be the whiskey guy, and they're going to be the cigar guys, and we're going to have fun. Um, anyway, <clears throat> Corey Slater's in the house. Welcome to the party. Um, slow night over Seattle. Decent night here. Just put it, Just had to put a shirt on. Okay, I don't... There's got to be some context behind that. Decent night, just had to put a shirt on. There's got to be some context behind that. Um, Yeah, there's got to be some context behind that. Um, you would use bottled water here since our water is really hard and lots of it. Exactly. And, that, and that's just the thing. Uh, some, you know, water tastes like stuff. And I didn't realize that water tastes like, I'm mean, like, water doesn't taste like anything. Water is water. But water comes from places, and those places where water comes from uh, has stuff that makes it taste like stuff. Evil Dimples is in the house. That's a new name. Welcome to the party, Evil Dimples. You are on the wheel of doom and glory, which I have now described several times, but that is what we are, this is what we are giving away when we spin the wheel of doom and glory. The wheel of doom and glory gives you a chance to win four sample bottles of our delicious whiskey, straight whiskey, special reserve, double oak rye, and boomtown bourbon. The boomtown bourbon is a whiskey that most people don't have never had their hands on. Uh, we have sold... Just over 150 bottles of Boomtown Bourbon in the history of the distillery. Uh, is that right? 75 bottles. Yeah, I think we had 75 bottles in our first batch. No, that's not right. We had 75 cases in our first batch. 75 cases. No, that's not right. We had 35 cases in our first batch. Uh, and our second batch was another 35 cases. And our fourth batch was our, our third batch was 10 cases so that's 70 80 cases we've sold less than 100 cases in the entire world um and next year we're going to have over over 400 cases produced uh so you're going to have a chance to do something 
that less than 100 or less than what 80 times 12 is is that a thousand 80 times 12 is uh shit yeah that's like a thousand less than a thousand people have been able to have a bottle of our boomtown bourbon you're gonna be one of a thousand if you win the wheel if you win the spin on the wheel which we will spin next month next month being uh, September, mid-September. You must be present to win. You must be on our chat to win. And every time you join us in a chat, you get your name on the wheel. Every time you uh, play on our trivia, you get your name on the wheel. You win trivia four four times. Uh, second place trivia two times. Third place trivia one time. There we go. Um, and we spin that wheel next month. Um, that's what makes it... Water is what makes it, whether it's beer or liquor... Uh, absolutely. Absolutely. If you think of beer, beer is 96% water in some cases, 94% water, uh, 92% water. Uh, my whiskey is 55% water. So when I tell people I'm drinking mostly water, I'm not lying. You know, your traditional alcohols are 60% water, 80% ABV. Um, they start in water. They get distilled through, they get fermented in water, distilled in water, and then uh, finished with water. They get, they get water added to them to raise the proof up. It is so important to have really good water. Um, so important to have uh, uh, really good water. And yes, evil dimples. That is a very important part about muddling the, uh, the cherry along with the uh, bitters and the sugar cube. It kind of mixes all that stuff together into kind of a paste. Um, and that's, and, and it, and it, it blends those juices together and it blends all those flavors together so that it, it becomes, it, it kind of becomes a paste at the bottom of the, the jar. Uh, it wasn't really a very thick paste, um, because I had, I had added the water already, but, uh, it does it, uh, the, 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 the juices from the cherry along with the sugar, uh, kind of stirs it around and make it's, it's not a paste. I guess it's more of a syrup. Uh, than a paste, but yes, that's exactly what the muddling does. Uh, the muddling does all that. And if you're if you're using uh, mint leaves or limes or anything like that, the muddling just breaks up the skin and breaks up the oils and gets all that stuff out of the uh, the lawn clippings that you put into your drink. Um, so there you go. Sugar cube, yes. <laughs> Ontario half prices tax. Uh, speaking of stuff, <laughs> you want to use an ice cube for your old fashioned made up of more. <laughs> Funny you should say that. Uh, yeah, uh, that would be, uh, actually, that'd be a neat treat. If you could figure out how to make bourbon freeze, that would be cool. Um, when I was growing up, if mama called me a full middle name, I was in trouble. <laughs> mm. Pro Prohibition did a lot of things, uh, Steve. And Steve gets your name on the wheel again. Steve Herpenbeck. Prohibition did a lot of things. Prohibition consolidated production uh, from small distilleries throughout the United States to large distilleries in a central production region in uh, Kentucky. Uh, a lot of distilleries went out of business and a lot of brands sold to other distilleries and again consolidated those brands into single production centers. Um, <clears throat> it changed the distribution, the nature of distribution in the United States. It changed our relationship with alcohol. It changed our, uh, I mean, we were drinking as a country, we were drinking a lot of alcohol. Like every man, woman, and child was averaging something like what, five to ten gallons? Five gallons a month, something like that? Did somebody drink all of your cocktail, my sweet? See, this is the... I don't know if you can tell the color change, difference anymore. Uh, you can't really tell the... This was much lighter than this one. This one was much dark. You can kind of tell. It's kind of black and brown. And this is kind of red and uh, clear. Love you, my sweet. Have a great night. I'll come see you in a little while. I'll come see you in a little while. If we get 700 subscribers tonight, I'm going to shave her head. Hey, don't say anything if it's okay if I shave your head when we get 700 subscribers. 
She didn't say anything. So there you go. It's going to be okay. It's going to be great. Um, <laughs> um, yeah, she's not going to let me shave her head. It's going to be, but it's going to be a fun fight. Um, but yeah, prohibition did a lot of things, both good and bad. It, it, it did a lot of harm uh, and it reorganized the industry entirely. Um, but it also basically made room for bourbon to become the national spirit. Which wouldn't have happened, I don't think, without, uh, wouldn't have happened without Prohibition. Uh, well, would it have? No, I don't think it would have happened without Prohibition, because Prohibition shut down a lot of distilleries all throughout the hinterlands. Um, a lot of small distilleries. So you had your major production centers in, like, Indiana and Iowa and Kentucky and... Uh, maybe one other place I can't think of, but uh, the small guys throughout Pennsylvania, New Orleans, um, North Carolina, South Carolina, uh, a whole bunch of small producers all out in the West that, you know, all the private farms and small farms and uh, individual farmers who all had stills or all had aging operations, barns and whatever. Yeah, all that stuff shut down. That was all gone during Prohibition. Uh, and it all consolidated around. Same, it was the same thing with brewers, too. The same thing with, uh, with, with regional, local, small brewers that were attached to bars and attached to restaurants. All those guys shut down. And it became uh, Budweiser, Anheuser-Busch, um, or Anheuser-Busch, Miller, Coors. Uh, you know, it was just a handful of major mass producers. And it was mostly Anheuser-Busch, Budweiser, that had their little regional breweries all around the uh, all around the country, and that was part of their production strategy. They they set up these regional producers and uh, kind of were the producer in the United States for a long time. Um, but there were also some others, Milwaukee's Best and uh, Pabst and uh, Blue Rib or yeah Blue Ribbon and uh, Pearl. There were there were there were small regional guys that grew up after Prohibition. Uh, and some of them survived Prohibition and were able to grow up, but the really small ones, they all just went away and uh, got consolidated up in the big guys. That's how, that's, that was one of the things that Prohibition did. It, it led to a major consolidation in the industry, uh, both parts of the industry, both uh, the brewing and uh, distilling parts of the industry. Um, so there you go. Um, uh, freezing alcohol with liquid nitrogen. I don't think that, I don't think it's possible to freeze. Alcohol's freezing point is far, I don't know, maybe with liquid nitrogen. It's possible. But alcohol's freezing point is really, 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 really low. I don't even think alcohol freezes in space. I think it vaporizes. Uh, so there you go. Um, in fact, I know alcohol vaporizes in space because I've been... I've done a lot of research on how to send alcohol into space. Um, Mike's going to take off and close up for the night. Thanks, Mike, for stopping in and being awesome. Um, 1 p.m. probably asleep. <laughs> oh, it cooled down. Gotcha. Where? Oh, yeah, that's right. You're in Canada. Uh, so, obviously. Yeah, I get that. Uh it snows all the time up there. I guess it's, what, mid-August? So I guess, yeah, it's getting time for uh, the freeze to start <sighs> in Canada. God, Canada. Um, I, last time I was up in Minnesota was August. And when I woke up in the morning in Minnesota, Madison, it was Wisconsin. It was Wisconsin. It was Madison, Wisconsin. I woke up in the morning. It was 57 degrees. In Madison, Wisconsin. I woke up in the morning, 57 degrees. I got up and I went for a run. Just, you know, in a quick, easy five-mile run that morning. Because I used to run a lot. Um, I checked my weather app at home to see what the temperature was at home. It was 7 o'clock in the morning. I just finished my run. It was 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Some, somewhere between 6.30 and 7 o'clock. I checked the weather at home. And it was 85 degrees in Houston already. 85 degrees. It was 57 degrees 
in Madison, Wisconsin, and it was 85 degrees here. I think it probably got up to 103 that day here at home, and I don't think it topped 82. Oh, God. Yeah. Just thinking about it, you know, makes me... It makes me wish my our summers were milder so that it would be more comfortable and we could go do stuff in, like, the hottest part of the time. But then the payoff, of course, is that in December, I can go outside and do stuff. <laughs> and it doesn't hurt my face to go get the mail. They had... The same place up there in Madison. They have a lake, Lake Madison. They have ice quakes. The company I was visiting was a, 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 a office building on the on the coast of this lake, on the banks of this lake, and they were telling me about their ice quakes that they would have in the winter because it would be so cold. How cold was it? So cold that the ice would shift and crack, and when the ice shifted and cracked, it would just create a, a fissure going down the ice on the lake and they could feel it in the building and it was an ice quake. Yeah, I don't, I don't, I'm okay with 106 degrees in June if I don't have to deal with ice quakes because that goddamn dealing with, I, that's, that's barely fit for human habitation to be, I mean, completely honest, barely fit for human habitation. Um, I didn't know that. I should come in with my other chin. Oh, <laughs> I thought that was a pseudonym, Evil Dimples. I didn't think your uh, name was Evil Dimples. Uh, <laughs> I had a hunch that, that was a. I, you know, honestly, I don't. I don't think it makes a huge bit of difference. It might up your odds a little bit, but uh, not a tremendous amount. Uh, Twisted's in the house. Cheers, Twisted Art Lady. Twisted. Another internet famous fan of mine, she's killing it over on the uh, TikToks and killing it over here on the YouTubes. Her art is fucking amazing. Y'all should go check it out. Uh, absolutely go check it out. She does some really cool stuff. And if I can ever trick her into coming down to Houston for any amount of time, I'm going to get her to help me uh, pour uh, uh, surfaces on my, uh, pour my bar surfaces, pour my bar top for me. That'd be awesome. Um, but I got to figure out a good way to trick her to come down to Houston. Maybe I should put some cheese, like like some cheese uh, under a box with a little stick on it, like the box, and then have the cheese here. And then when she comes to get the cheese, I just like pull the stick away and like fall on her. And then I can seal up the box and put her in the mail and send her down to Houston. But then I'd actually have to be in Dallas. Huh, that's going to be a challenge. I'll figure it out. It's not that hard to do. I'll figure something. I tricked a whole I tricked a I tricked a whole woman into marrying me for like twenty something years now. I could probably trick I could probably trick her into coming down to Houston. It's not gonna be that hard. I'll think I'll think of something. I'll think of something clever and crafty. And then I'll I won't it'll just be between you and us. We won't tell her. We'll that's how we'll do it. It'll be awesome. I don't know what it'll be yet, but it'll be cool. Totally cool. Um Maybe send a, uh, maybe like send an Uber up to Dallas and just drive around town until she needs an Uber. And then, yeah, maybe that's what I'll do. Hmm. I don't know. We'll think of something. We'll think of something. Don't tell anybody though. Like keep it just between you and me, chat. Don't tell, don't tell Sam. Don't tell Twist. Just you and me. Got it? Got it. Cool. Okay. Back onto the chat. You can listen again, Twisted. We're, we're done talking amongst ourselves. You can listen. You can participate again. Um, <laughs> if I sus, you probably hear about it in the news since it would probably explode on. <laughs> I'm pretty, I don't know. I don't know. Donate the hair. Oh, that's, oh man. Dude, Corey, that would put her in like the weird, like I'd be all like, like a turn on the camera and you'd be all like, honey, we're going to cut your hair for locks of love or whatever. And she's like, how, how can you possibly say no? You can't be mad at me for that, right? I'm not, I'm not doing a mean prank of cutting your hair off while you're sleeping. I'm donating it to a worthy cause. 
that's genius. That's good. Awesome. Yeah. All right, Corey. You're on to something there, buddy. You're, you're the one. You're the one helping me figure out how to cut how to not get murdered when I cut her hair off at night. That is perfect. That's awesome. I'm still probably going to get murdered, but it'll be for a good cause. It'll be for a good cause. Absolutely. Samantha P. has added her name to the Wheel of Doom and Glory. And that is a new name. Cheers, Samantha P. A new name that I haven't I haven't seen before, but I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate you joining us uh, in the party, even if... Well, yeah, it's awesome. Um, don't forget to like and subscribe and hit the notification bell. The notification bell is extremely important. Why is the notification bell extremely important? Because I do lives randomly from the shop. In fact, I'm probably going to do one tomorrow and possibly Saturday. I've got some work to do Saturday. Um, so you'll be able to uh, uh, participate in our live chats. When you participate in our live streams, uh, by getting in chat, saying hi, uh, being involved with the show, you get your name on the Wheel of Doom and Glory. The Wheel of Doom and Glory is what we're using, what we're spinning in order to give away this box right here. And inside this box is... Inside this box is all that you, all that you need. What is it? It is whiskey and a cigar from a nationally renowned tobacconist. It is one sample of each of our major labels that we carry. Our straight whiskey, special reserve, uh, straight whiskey, special reserve, double oak rye, and Boomtown bourbon. The Boomtown bourbon being the key to the whole thing because the Boomtown bourbon is a very special treat. Like, we haven't made a lot of it. We, we, we haven't had the opportunity to make a lot of it. We've sold every bit that we've made, but we haven't had the opportunity to make a lot of it. And next year, we're going to start making a lot more. And nobody, except for me, has one each of our Straight Whiskey Special Reserve, uh, Double Oak Rye, and Boomtown Bourbon. Um, I do know people who have bought bottles of each, but I also know that those people who have bought bottles of each have uh, consumed those bottles and they are empty. Nobody has full bottles. You'll be one of two. You and me. You and me. We'll be, we'll be like bros. Like uh, Siamese twins. Connected at the hip. I get hit, you feel it. You get hit, I feel it. No, those are the Corsican brothers. What are the Siamese twins? Siamese twins are the ones that are connected. The Corsican brothers is what I'm thinking of. Was that Cheech and Chong? Corsican brothers. What was the Corsican brothers? That was a movie, wasn't it? I'm going to have to look that up. I need to know right now. Corsican. Was it twins? Corsican Brothers. I believe that was a movie. Yeah, it was Cheech and Chong. I got that right. It was Cheech and Chong. One, hit, one gets hit, the other feels it. Uh, yeah, anyway, it was hilarious. A lot of pot. I've done stuff since I watched it. Anyway. Um, that's a good idea. That's a really good idea. She would not have a choice. Because how are you going to say no to cancer patients, right? I mean, that's just mean. And she's not mean. She's a lovely, lovely human being. Just gorgeous all the way down to her soul. She wouldn't possibly be able to say no. <laughs> she's gonna she's gonna stab me in the eye with a fork is what she's gonna do <laughs> anyway um the breweries are making a big comeback uh there's been a huge well i mean ever since the mid 90s there's been a huge movement towards uh small micro breweries they at least here locally they've suffered a lot since the pandemic there have been one, two, three, at least that I can think of off the top of my head that have closed since the beginning of the year, just in this area, uh, which is really frustrating because a lot of people give a lot of lip service to supporting local, but then they go and not support local. So there you go. Um, well, depending on the alcohol content, whether it's freezing or not, I'm, I'm thinking more about the alcohol itself. Um, because, you know, if it's trapped in water, the water will freeze around the alcohol, and the alcohol uh, molecules will be trapped inside of the ice, and you'll have little pockets of vaporized uh, alcohol inside the ice. 
Uh, but if you just have alcohol, just plain old alcohol, like, you know, Everclear, or just pure alcohol, and you just toss that in space, it vaporizes like that. Uh, because the vapor point at, at zero Gs, or at zero atmospheres, uh, or near zero atmospheres, the freezing point is above the vaporization, the boiling point. So, I'm sorry, no, I have that backwards. The freezing point is below the vaporization point. So as the temperature drops, it vaporizes before it freezes. Um, which is one of the one of the uh, concerns that I have when I make my space. I haven't talked about my space whiskey in a long time. Uh, so I want to take a barrel of whiskey, attach it to a weather balloon, send it up to the edge of the atmosphere, get it into space, collect the uh, barrel, bottle of whiskey, make space whiskey. My space bourbon. Um, my biggest concern is the alcohol vaporizing out of the water before the water freezes and then losing all of the product that I send up into space to space. Uh, I don't want that to happen for obvious reasons. I want the uh, alcohol to actually be alcoholic when it reaches back to Earth. So, um, yeah. Uh, uh, depending on the, the mixture, obviously, the, the water's going to freeze. At some point, the water's going to freeze. I don't know if the alcohol vaporizes before the water freezes, though. And that's a concern that I've got. And it may not be that big of a deal. It may be more of a concern that the barrel explodes because the alcohol vaporizes, and now you have vaporized, or you have alcohol vapor inside of a wooden canister that just blows... Uh, the top and bottom out of that thing. I don't know. I don't know what'll happen, but I am here to run experiments and see if it'll work. We might start those experiments in the summer. I just don't have the cash to do it right now. Uh, it's at least a thousand dollars to buy the rig to send it to space. And I just don't have that kind of money laying around because I've got more important stuff to do than, uh, purchase weather balloons. So there you go. Uh, but next summer I might have enough money laying around to purchase weather balloons. Just to uh, to do experiments, it'll be fun. It'll be fun. Uh, anyway, um, Michael got an extra late from another. Oh, cool. Um, if I had to guess, I have I have a couple of candidates in my mind. Evil dimples. Uh, is either Ting Ting or uh, uh, Stream of Ice and Fire. Uh, I've got I've got some candidates in my head. One of I'm thinking one of those two. Um, Cindy Cindy Hunt, Mike's <laughs> Mike's wife. <laughs> uh, I've got some candidates in my head. I'm not. I, I I can't I mean the avatar doesn't give away a whole lot of information. Uh, you're a mile away from internet. Don't be silly. You're totally internet famous. Uh, <laughs> uh, you also uh, don't forget, Sam. You've also you uh, have a standing invitation to do a gallery show at my distillery. Um, so there you go. <laughs> good causes. Yep. Some ladies look good in the, with the pixie cut. No, I want to shave it down to the skull. I want to give her the same haircut I've got. I absolutely. I want to. I want to have matching. See the benefit. Make sure she's not watching. The benefit would be that she could wear wigs. She could have blue hair, blonde hair, red hair. Uh, she could do whatever she wanted with her. She could be a brunette. She could have silver with, like, antennas and whatever she wanted. She could do anything she wanted with her hair for, like, I don't know, six months before it grew back. She could she could do whatever. She, it would open up a whole world of fashion possibilities to her. She would be Moira Shit from uh, Shit's Creek. No, not Shit. Uh, Roy, Moira, um, they're not the Shits. They're the... Uh, they're the, uh, uh, oh shit, I forgot the last name of the family in Schitt's Creek. That'll come to me later. Uh, it's a great, great TV series. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Um, 
there you go. Um, but yeah, she could do all kinds of cool stuff. I'm going to have to record a, another short to get her to, yeah. Murder, <laughs> murder for a good cause sounds like the worst fun. It's not even a fundraiser. <laughs> That's the thing about it. It's just a stupid stunt to get 700 subscribers. <laughs> Is the worst fundraiser ever because I'm not raising any money. I'm just d doing dumb shit on my stupid channel. <laughs> uh, <laughs> the dumbest fundraiser ever. Um, you just want the box? Like, be late for the stream? <laughs> you just want the box. It was, what's really cool is these boxes are, like, free. If you buy cigars, uh, I bought these cigars here. I bought these cigars and they threw in the box for free. Then I bought these cigars and they threw in the box for free. So yeah, you know, that's the cool thing about it. You just, uh, you buy some cigars and they throw in the box. It's really neat. Or, you know, the box might cost five bucks. Uh, and they're perfect size for little, uh, uh, for packing little, uh, giveaways and treasures into. They're perfect size for that shit. Um, they're not the perfect size if you want to do a, a Christmas time dick in the box, though. At least not for me. <laughs> mm -mm 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 -mm. All right. See, that's the problem with muddling cherries. I don't see if you can see this. There's shit at the bottom of the cup. Can you see that? Can you see the shit at the bottom of the cup? That's just gross. I don't like having garbage in my drinks. Like, that's just gross. You get to the bottom and it's like pulp. Ugh. I don't even like pulp in my, like, uh, orange juice. Because I'm a baby. I'm, an, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a fucking baby. I don't like pulp in my orange juice. I want to strain out my orange juice when I drink it. I just want it to be orange juice. Ugh. All right, where were we? Great movie. What great movie? Oh, Cheech and Chong, Corsica Brothers. Right. Um, 23 and a half inches of hair. Jesus, that's a lot of hair. Um, not as satisfying as I hoped. <laughs> it was down to my butt and I shaved a ball. I hope you mean it was down to your butt hanging off of your head. Because if it was just like a trail of hair going down like the back of your neck, down to your butt, that'd be kind of weird. Um, oh, you're a survivor. Oh, cool. Congratulations. Uh, cancer's a cancer's a, a, a fucking asshole. I hate cancer. It cheats when it, it, it doesn't play by the same rules as, uh, as we do. It cheats. And, uh... I'm congratulations for beating its ass because it's a it's a it's a lying cheating motherfucker and I hate cancer. Cancer sucks. Um, first anniversary of my best friend's uh, no, it was her first birthday after losing her fight to cancer. Uh, she uh, we we did a scarf drive at the distillery, raised uh, uh, collected scarfs and wigs for. Uh, uh, for cancer patients and it was a it was a good time it was a bittersweet good time at the distillery it was uh, a good way to remember mel she was good people and uh we still miss her she, it, it sucks yeah, fucking cancer sucks it cheats but i'm not gonna talk about that anymore because it sucks and it cheats and it's an asshole um so anyway have hair down to your ass before you go to hell <laughs> Excuse me. I had hair past your belt loops. You got a Karen cut and donated it. <laughs> Did you ever ask to see the manager, though? You get a Karen cut, you have to ask to see the manager. You need a trim is getting caught in your belt buckle when you do have your pants. <laughs> um, Hubs is 6'3", and he has well, hair well past his belt buckle. Let's move his hair to sit down. Oh. I used to have long hair back when I was a kid. When I was in college, I had very long hair. I enjoyed it. Uh, but now I don't have hair at all. I shave all this shit off. Um, 
experimenting with booze, need a volunteer. Uh, I, okay, so my experiments with booze. I've got this notebook over here uh, where I'm doing my research for my space whiskey. Um, I have th uh, It's a three-part plan, um, a three-part project uh, for development of this plan. Uh, the first part is going to be just basically testing the proof of concept. When I'm ready to start moving forward and pull the trigger, I'm going to be testing the proof of concept. Where basically I take the barrel, put it into a vacuum chamber, or take the barrel, fill it with alcohol, put it in the vacuum chamber, crank it down to uh, as close to zero uh, atmospheres as I can get it. And I'm going to see what happens. If the barrel explodes, then I'll get a different type of barrel. Uh, you know, I can... I. The big challenge is preserving weight. Uh, I may not be able to make space bourbon. I may have to make space whiskey. Um, but the whole point of the idea is to have the, the whiskey exposed to the extreme conditions of low atmosphere, drastic uh, temperature fluctuations, and uh, drastic uh, air pressure fluctuations. Uh, so basically taking everything that you would normally get in a 12 to 48 month cycle and compressing it and jamming it into like eight hours and then seeing what happens. Um, so, but the, but the first question is whether or not the actual barrel can even hold up to the extremes of low pressure and then air pressure and low pressure and air, um, Because the water inside, because it's going to be a you know a, a, a 120 or so proof, so it'll be 60% alcohol, 40% water. The water is almost certainly going to freeze, or at least parts of the water are going to freeze. Uh, so the question is, what's going to happen inside the barrel as it goes up into space and gets into the edge of the atmosphere? Is the water going to freeze to the edge of the barrel, or is the water going to just kind of turn slushy and the alcohol is going to vaporize. I don't know. I don't know exactly what's going to happen yet, but I want to do those experiments on earth first and then test the rigging and, you know, send the air the, the balloon into space once or to the edge of the atmosphere once or twice, uh, once, uh, without a load, once with a load. And then the third time sending it to space with the full, fully laden rig with the GoPro and the barrel and uh, maybe a little Lego guy standing on the barrel uh, <laughs> and the GPS monitor and all the stuff that we need to recover this thing. And, you know, as the as the barrel's here and the GoPro's here, it'll be like what, looking over the edge of the barrel to see the curvature of the earth as it goes up onto the edge of the atmosphere and into space. Um, and then, you know, the GPS uh, ping will guide us back to the, so it's a, it's a three part, uh, project of testing the proof of concept, testing the rigging, and then actually sending the, uh, uh, project, the actual space mission into the edge of the, uh, atmosphere. Uh, it's going to be fucking awesome. I can't wait. Uh, that's going to be probably next summer. I was hoping it would be this summer, but it'll probably be next summer. So there you go. Um, man knocks ISS out of orbit trying to create space whiskey. That would be great. <laughs> that would be a great headline. Uh, <laughs> crazy, crazy local distiller <laughs> ruins billion dollar space program. <laughs> With his stupid space whiskey idea. <laughs> um, see, Twisted keeps saying she's not internet famous, and she's just full of shit. She's totally internet famous. <laughs> she's totally internet famous. But yeah, we could definitely do a gallery show. It'd be fun. It'd be, it'd be a hoot. Um, Addie's in the house. Cheers, Addie Pacal. Addy. Yet another name to add to the wheel of doom and glory. Hopefully there will be more glory than doom. Um, 46 now, and I have medium dark reddish brown hair down to my mid-back. But underneath, 
12 dreadlocks with bright red extensions. <laughs> Nothing weird about that. That sounds awesome. Um, <laughs> Dick in the box, matchbox. Uh, see, what's really fun is as I go back through comments of remembering what I was talking about and what y'all are commenting on and like connecting the what I was talking about 10 minutes ago to what y'all are commenting on when I get to the comment. It, that's the funniest damn thing. It, it, I, I love it. I'm here for it. Uh, <laughs> um, Mammoth Mountain. Mammoth Mountain. What the fuck is Mammoth Mountain? Oh, you're out. You're out west. That's where it's at. Never mind. Um, I hate pulp. I absolutely. I, I really do. I hate having the pulp in my. Uh, especially the thick pulp. I don't mind a little bit of pulp. When I was a kid, I hated it. I uh, absolutely hated it. Uh, I, I drank Tang when I was a kid because I hated pulp in my orange juice. And I just ugh. Now I'm a grown ass man. I don't mind a little bit of pulp. But uh, like when you go to Chick Fil A and they have the pulp in their lemonade, and you get it, it you you're getting the lemonade. When you get the lemonade at the bottom of the the batch of lemonade that they made, and it's like, it's like this, just ugh. It tastes like leaves. And ugh, it's so gross. Ugh, I hate it. I absolutely hate it. Um, I'll never guess your main account. I, I well, you're right. I won't guess. I'm I'm not gonna guess. <laughs> I'll let you stay anonymous. Uh, but I didn't think that, that Evil Dimples was your main account. But uh, uh, I was down for it if it was. That's cool. But I, I will let you remain anonymous. I'm sure I'll figure it out eventually. But I'll, I will keep it to myself. Thank you. <laughs> if you wish to reveal it, I will, I will be happy to know. But I, you, can, you can maintain your anonymity now. Uh, I'm, sure, I'm sure I'll probably see you on another stream somewhere. Um, Bimbo's back. Bimbo's back and there's gonna be trouble. Hey, nah, hey, nah. Eh, nah, that didn't work. Anyway. Uh, I got hot pink. Mine's in there. Um, I missed... I missed last weekend's show, Bimbo. And I'm sorry. I really do want to catch her. I, I, I really do try and catch her shows. Uh... I just, I, our schedules don't sync up, and I'm trying, I'm really trying, I'm really trying hard, uh, but our schedules just aren't syncing up. Uh, one time, one day soon, I will be there, and I will catch all of your show, because I will be sitting right here working with Bimbo Barbarella in the background. Um, squeeze my own, oh, well, yeah, if you squeeze your own, you're going to get a whole shit ton of pulp. Uh, I don't do that anymore. What's up with all the men wearing sunglasses? There is a light right here in my eyes. This light, that is, there's a light right there shining like directly into my eyes. That's bright. I can't see anything when that light's on. I'm trying to read over here. And my, I don't have my glasses. I'm trying to read. I can't, I can't see. That's all I can do. I, I don't have a proper lighting rig. This is my light. Hang on, let me show you. This is my lighting rig. It's literally just my, my office uh, desk lamp. Uh, it's an LED desk lamp. It's the same type of light that would be a, a ring light, but it's just a bar. Um, bought it from Amazon. It's just a bar lamp. Uh, but uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's literally shining right in my face. I can't see shit with that thing on. Um, this way? Which way? Which way has the subscribe sign? Yeah. I'm going to Put it right there. Okay. And this is just a, a webcam. Just a simple webcam. High quality, though. I'll take it. It's better than nothing. It's way better than the cam on my uh, uh, computer over here. Anyway. Um, and plus... Turn the light off. When I'm over here reading, like, there's the camera, and I'm over here reading. You can't see, like, my eyes not not looking it kind of looks like i'm looking at you this way <laughs> it kind of looks like i'm looking at you even though i'm looking down here uh and that works out good too uh i don't want y'all to think i'm not paying attention to you and making direct eye contact it's your beautiful faces 
because I'm looking down here. Down. I'm looking this way. This is where my eyes are going right now. But if I if I turn my head this way, I can look down here where my eyes are going. See, it's it's a uh, stagecraft. <laughs> See, look. This is where I'm looking. I'm not looking at you. I'm looking over here off to the side. See? And then if I look over here at the monitor, I look over back over here, look over at the monitor, look back over here, the camera's up here. Stagecraft. <laughs> um, and also, my eyes are mesmerizing. If I stare at your, in, if I stare deep into your soul all night long, then you will do my bidding. And I don't want, I don't want that burden. I don't want to be hypnotizing you. You, you are a, a, a precious individual soul. And you don't need me hypnotizing you and taking over your life and your brain and your heart and making you do things that, that you otherwise wouldn't do. That's what I do when I go to sales. That's how I mesmerize people. I, I literally use a pen and get you to do my bidding. You come in. You don't know why you're coming into specs, but you come into specs. And then this whiskey guy is telling you what you're going to want to do. And you're going to want to buy a bottle of whiskey. And you buy a bottle of whiskey and you leave the store and you don't even know what happened to the last 20 minutes of your life. <laughs> it's all, you know, sales techniques. Um. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it's mostly just the lights. <laughs> Are we 14 more to 700 now, Bimbo? Thank you. Um, is that where we're at? We were at 688 uh, earlier today. I think we topped out at 689 yesterday or the day before. Uh, but then we dropped a couple of uh, subscribers for some reason. Uh, you know, it fluctuates between 685 and 690. We'll, we'll pop through... Uh, we'll pop through to 700, possibly by the end of the month. Maybe, maybe not. They changed the way shorts work. Uh, the shorts are now linked. Uh, the Okay, so this was a big update to the YouTube algorithm in the last, I want to say, 7 to 10 days. So the shorts feed now bridges over to your recommended channels. So if you hit like on a short that you see... Even if you're not subscribed to the channel, YouTube will recommend their videos to you on your recommend on your on your uh, uh, main page. So if you're liking shorts, then that channel's recommendations will come up on your uh, uh, YouTube homepage. So shorts had previously there there was general there there was previously a shorts population and a regular channel population. And there wasn't a lot of crossover between those. So there wasn't a lot of, um, there wasn't a lot of value as far as channel building over on the shorts page. You needed to tell people to subscribe and go to your channel in order for them to get recommendations for your channel. Uh, but now because the shorts page is bridged over to the rest of the content on YouTube, when people watch your video and like your video, the chance that you will be recommended on their main feed goes up as well. But there's still a distinctly different population on the YouTube feed of people who are watching shorts and people who are watching the main channels. Uh, so there, there's not a lot of crossover of those populations yet, but they're, they're, they're beginning the process of merging those two populations, which is super duper exciting for someone like me who doesn't make a lot of stuff that's in between the 15 second and six hour <laughs> territory. I don't have a lot of five minute, 10 minute, 12 minute videos. Uh, most of my shit is either 15 to 60 seconds or Three and a half to six hours. That's it. That's I, I'm nowhere in between. I try to do short edited videos, but I suck at it and I don't like doing it. It's no fun. I don't like doing it. Uh, it's a pain in the ass. But I am going to do a cocktail comparison with the, the two different types of uh, old fashions. I am going to do that. I'm going to re-record the whole like 20 minute segment that I did earlier. Over in my kitchen or maybe right here. I don't know. I'll... I'll 
do something. I don't know, set up the camera, set up two cameras, do the one camera on the face and one camera on the on the actual cocktails. We'll see. Um, and then merge everything together. Um, I found a I found a program that'll change my dot mods or dot movs to mp3s or mp4s. So I may be able to recover the uh, 4th of July special that we did. I uh, may be able to recover that and actually edit that into a show. Uh, 4th of July and 600 subscriber special. Uh, I saw some of the footage and it kind of sucked. But uh, that's what happens when you put the camera in the hands of a 15-year-old. It just It was okay, but it kind of sucked. But I might be able to cut it together into a really cool show. We'll see. We'll see. You know, I have other stuff to do. I have time. Uh, when I have time to do it. You know, in my spare time. Uh, so anyway, I, when Sam said I try to stay fairly unrecognizable because of where I work, I have enough reasons to send people. <laughs> Good point, Bacon. Um, I actually wouldn't mind being recognized on the street, but, uh, you know, it's never going to happen. I, I'm, I'm fine being behind the scenes. I'm fine being recognized on the street. I don't know. I do enough dumb shit that I probably shouldn't ever be recognized. <laughs> Blatt's beer? I've never heard of Blatt's beer. Uh, you're going to have to look that one up yourself. Um, Bimbo, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm guessing Mouse? Uh, Samantha said now, good night, Samantha. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Christina's career space. Oh, yes, Christina's in the house. Uh, that's right. I spell the problem. Sipping, <laughs> sick of being right all the time. Um, I don't know. No, I don't know which, uh, I don't know which your, uh, which, what your main page is. I know that Evil Dimples is not your main page. I thought you were Ting Ting or uh, Cindy, but no, I don't know. I don't know what your main page is, uh, unless you're uh, Lisa. If you're Lisa, then you can't win. Lisa doesn't have dimples. Does Lisa have dimples? If you're Lisa, you can't win the box. So, not that it matters. Uh, Florida has never had an ice quake. That is true, Bimbo Barbarella. Florida has never had an ice quake. However, Florida has had a significant tragedy that was caused by ice and freezing. Uh, you know, there was this thing with the space shuttle that took off after O-rings froze. So, you know, Florida's not immune to ice and freezes. Uh, you know, so, you know, there, you know, so, huh. <laughs> Plus, Florida is full of natural disasters known as Florida men. So, you know, deal. <laughs> of course, Texas is full of natural disasters known as Texas men, too. And, you know, I was thinking about that earlier today. Texas used to be, like, in the 50s and 60s and 70s, even in the 80s, Texas was like Texas. You know, people wanted to be. Texans. People look to the state. We were a, a, a leader in the country. We created titans. Sam Rayburn and Lyndon Johnson and 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 both of the Bushes, G uh G dub and GH dub. Um Ann Richards. Uh I mean hell, even Ross Perot and 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 uh uh T. Boone Pickens, well, he's modern. He's now. He's today. Uh, but, you know, Dallas was uh, the thing with the uh, J.R. and the Ewings, all the all those guys. Dallas was a thing. Uh, Bum Phillips. Uh, I mean, we, we, we just produced people just in general, larger-than-life figures that were like, titans of their industry and 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 influential around the world and they were just like like people looked to those guys and they were like they're 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 caricatures they're ridiculous 
but man, they're something, they're larger than life. There's something else. They're, they're, they're legendary human beings, right? And now we produce sniveling little twats like Ted Cruz and Rick Perry and just jokes. We, we, we produce jokes and it's, man, we used to be, we used to be leaders of the country and now we're a roadblock and it's, man, I, I, I wish it's frustrating because I'm, because I'm proud of my state. I'm proud of where I'm from. I love where I'm from and everything about Texas. It's a beautiful place. It's a big, big, big country, big open sky, just land of opportunity. You can become whoever you want to be and do whatever you want to do. And, and now we, we, God, it's a, we can't, we're not even influential enough to get a space shuttle, a retired space shuttle docked at mission control in Houston of all things. Like it's the, it's the place that told the space shuttles what to do and that, and like woke the astronauts up in the morning, every morning from mission control right here in Houston. And we couldn't even get a real space shuttle. We got the training space shuttle, the enterprise. No, not the, we got the, uh, well, I don't know, whatever they named the, uh, training show. Oh, it's so frustrating. So frustrating. Sometimes it's just so frustrating. You know, that ridiculous Rick Perry, ugh, Ted Cruz, Greg Abbott, just a whole pile of jokes. Uh, anyway, where was, where, I don't have my, uh, my, my cursor. All right, we'll find it. I'll find where I got, uh, I'll find where I, where I wrapped up. I'm somewhere in here. Where are we at? Bright light, slide in, any close. Um, there we are. Florida's never had it right. Um, okay, where are we at? Uh, I think you might have given yourself away, but I'll keep it to myself. <laughs> I'm not paying close enough attention. That's my fault. Um, YouTube's been screwing over people who host. YouTube's been screwing over people who host host oh like these live shows oh okay i didn't know that um show by that let uh find us find us evil dimples yeah you're not lisa okay that's fair that's fair i didn't think lisa had dimples but i don't really pay that close attention i, I might pay attention <laughs> you're, you're texting and you're kind of like a natural disaster there's nothing wrong with it i mean you know, there's nothing, uh, like, most of us kind of are natural disasters, but, uh, you know, some of us are more natural disaster than others. <laughs> what famous rock bands are from Texas? Stevie Ray Vaughan uh, and Double Trouble. ZZ Top um, is from Texas. Uh, uh, X. Um, uh not in living color uh x something x uh shit i can't think of them um rock bands rock bands that's a, sp a very specific question of rock bands because i know a lot of folk bands uh folk americana country and western obviously uh how elvis uh recorded down here in houston for uh uh, for uh, 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 one record at least, Willie Nelson, who recorded down here in Houston. Beyonce's from Houston. Um, ZZ Top's the biggest one that I can think of. Um, let's see here. Houston Rock and Roll. T Houston Rock Bands. Let's see here. Rock Bands from Houston. Destiny's Child. Uh, ZZ Top. Uh, let's see here. ZZ Top, of course, the big one. Uh, Galactic Cowboys. I've heard of them. Um, the Lemon Frog. Something. What was X? Um, yeah, there's not a lot of big name 
rock bands. There's a lot of performers that have come from Houston. Um, like Beyonce, Destiny's Child. Uh, once you get past ZZ Top, there's not a lot. Scarface was from Houston. Uh, the, um, uh, Scarface was from Houston. Kenny Rogers is from Houston. Uh, the Ghetto Boys, that's who I'm thinking of. They were from Houston. There's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of hip-hop guys. Uh, a lot of hip-hop, a lot of rap. Um, Chameleon Air is from Houston. Barbara Mandrell, I didn't know she was from Houston. Gangstar, Lecrae, Rodney Crowell. There's a lot of comedians that are from Houston, too. Or at least that came through Houston, like Sam Kinison and uh, Bill Burr. And uh, uh, Bill Burr, Sam Kinison, uh, Mitch Hedberg, a lot of those guys, they weren't from Houston, but they came through Houston on their way to other places. Uh, Yolanda Adams, Devin the Dude, King's X, that's who I'm thinking of. They were a Houston band. Blue October is a Houston band. Uh, Paul Wall, of course, a famous producer and performer. Uh, Latoya Luckett, Pimp C, Renee Olstead. Solange, Solange Knowles, uh, Mike Jones, uh, South Park Mexican, he's from Houston, DRI, Lil Flip, Lil Fripp, Robert Earl Keen was a dude from Houston, Robert Earl Keen, not a rock and roll guy, uh, country and western, uh, JC Velasquez, Zira, Jandek, the Red Crayola, Chingo Bling, uh, not just a, I mean, he's a performer on several, uh, on several levels. He's fucking amazing. Um, Steven Drods, Galactic Cowboys, Tila Tequila's from Houston. Really? Really now? No way is she from Houston. Where's she from? She's not from, no way is she from Houston. She's got to be from Pasadena or someplace like that. Someplace near Houston. She can't possibly be from Houston. I'm, I'm not, I'm calling bullshit on that. Um, <laughs> there's a whole bunch of others that I don't fucking recognize. I have no idea who these people are. Um, yeah, Finnis, Texas, Scale the Summit, Too Much Trouble, DJ, DJ Screw, I recognize that name. I'm old, I don't recognize names. I don't know who these people are. They're hippity hop music and they're sagging pants. <laughs> anyway, uh, back to the sure. There we go. Oops. Come on. My phone doesn't recognize me. Is that better? Thank you. All right, back to the show. You must be entertained. Uh, yeah, you remember Stevie Ray Everybody remembers Stevie Ray Vaughan. Uh, Selena was not from Houston. She was from, uh, uh, she was from Corpus Christi, but that's yet another, uh, Texas performance. Stevie Ray Vaughan wasn't from Houston. Stevie Ray Vaughan was from Texas. He was from Austin. Um, uh, at least he performed in Austin. Uh, I think he was from Austin uh, as well. Um, all right, let's let's get let's get back to chat. Let's get going. Um, famous rock bands from Texas. Yeah, uh, ZZ Top is probably the 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 pinnacle, and of course George Strait. You know, there's a lot of country and western guys um, who are uh, Texas bred and uh, true blue country folk Americana type of thing. Uh, anyway, uh, I live in Houston. Remember Six Flags over Dallas. Falling in the river is San Antonio being at a drive in, a drive in Houston and getting in the wrong car at a body break. Uh, we had a Six Flags here in Houston for a while. Uh, they tore it down in uh, 2004, 2005, 2006, sometime in that neighborhood. They tore down Six Flags and they were going to put a a housing complex in its place, but then the bottom fell out of the housing market, and now it is just an empty lot. Uh, we have a Six Flags water park in Houston, and that's it. We don't have an actual Six Flags. Um, 
Austin is still a music city. Uh, it is still a place where you can, uh, I mean, they have music all the time. Uh, it is a much richer uh, music scene than Houston. Houston has like five music scenes. That's one of the cool things when I talk to artists about performing in Houston. Uh, like on the southwest side of town, it's, a, it's entirely different than the southeast side of town. The southwest side of town is more, uh, more you get more crowds that have more black people in them. On the southeast side of town, you get more crowds that have more Hispanic people in them, which is odd because 59 goes up from Mexico into Houston. And it's like on the southeast side of town is where you get a lot of those folks who where they've settled on the southeast. But on the southwest, you get a lot of the the, the, the black population in the state of uh, or in the city of Houston. Strange how it works out because a little further north, you know, you, you get into the uh, the east, the west side of town, which is mostly uh, parts of it are young whites and parts of it are older whites. And then you, the further out you go, you get into the suburbs, which are the suburbs. Um, directly south of Houston is a very mixed rural part of town. And then further to the east and south, uh, you know, north of... Uh, Clear Lake NASA area that's on the southeast side of town, you move north of that, and then you get back into another uh, a, a broader mix of minorities where you have Greeks, gypsies, East Europeans, and uh, smatterings of Hispanic families all through that side of town. It's really weird. I mean, it's, it probably has a history of, of redlining in the city of, of making people live in certain areas of the city. But, you know, 60, 70 years on, it, there's there's blending in certain parts. But performers and artists all around town, they're like, yeah, you can go to different parts of town. You have, like, five different cities in the city of Houston. It's not, there's not a scene in the city of Houston. There's, you know, you can do three shows in the city of Houston uh, in a night. If you're a comedian, you can do three shows and have three entirely different rooms. You can have a white crowd, a black crowd, and a Hispanic crowd. Easy. Uh, within, you know, 30 minutes of each other. Um Houston's just weird like that, where you can, where you can have bands that that basically tour on the northwest side of town. They bump in between six bars on the northwest side of town over the course of uh, two months, and they never play in the southwest. They never play in the south. They never play in the east. They never play in the uh, northeast. They just play on that part of town, the northwest side of town. That's it. That's their local, uh, they, their local tour that they do every week. They they play these bars and that's it and they never get outside of that area and they make a they, they make a good good enough living they have uh, you know six bars seven bars eight bars that they play and they make a couple hundred bucks each week or I guess the five hundred bucks for each show um, you know a couple thousand bucks for the month and you know they have their day gig and they have their band gig and that's it that's what they do it absolutely crazy I don't think Austin's quite like that I think Austin probably plays a little bit more for their gigs <laughs> as well. Um, uh, but there you go. Um, the band that Stevie Ray Vaughan played with was Double Trouble. That was, uh, and he was an amazing guitar player. Yet another guy who died in a uh, plane crash way too young. Helicopter, if I'm not mistaken. The Jeff Beck of the 80s. Uh, yeah, Destiny's Child is not really considered rock, but they're from Houston. So they're from Texas. They're a Texas group. Uh, Beyonce is also from Texas and definitely not rock, but definitely from Texas, um, from Texas. Pantera is from Texas. I did not know that Pantera was from Texas. Huh? I should have known that, but I did not. Um, anyway. Okay. Um, you don't consider destiny's child and never give, <laughs> you never even consider them. Um, yeah, most of those names aren't, like, they're not famous at all. I don't know most of them. I know a few of them, but I don't know most of them. Um, and, yeah, Tila Tequila. Tila Tequila is the type of person you just need to take a shower when you see a picture of her. She's She looks sticky. Um, like she's covered in, uh, like she's covered in dried uh, syrup or, uh, like, 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 like uh, cotton candy. She looks like she's covered in cotton candy. Like Kesha. Kesha always looked sticky. Uh, like she was covered in cotton candy, like she rolled around in cotton candy, and it was just like yuck, icky. Uh, but damn, Kesha could. I I miss. 
I'm really glad that she's out making music and videos again because I really missed Kesha's performances. She she just had a really cool vibe of just like fuck it, I don't care. We're gonna go, we're gonna go party all night. Let's do it. Grab the jack and let's go. I I I, I enjoyed listening to her uh, to her music and I and and we were we were all poorer as a people when she wasn't making music and now she's making it again and it is good for everybody. Absolutely good for everybody. Um, and I don't care if you don't agree with me because if you don't agree with me, you're wrong. So there you go. Um, and also Taylor Swift is a national treasure. Um, <laughs> not able to enjoy. Oh, tequila is not allowed to drink. No, I didn't know that. Huh. Uh, legally, no. Physically, because she has to take a drug that makes her sick if she does. I didn't know that about Tila Tequila. Uh, don't remember what she did to get in that kind of a... I wonder... Huh. I wonder if it has something to do with her liver. Like... I, I don't know. I don't know. I have to, I'm, that's an interesting thing to look into. What's the deal with Tila Tequila? The deal... With Tila, I mean, maybe I'll look into it. Maybe if I don't write it down, I won't think about it tomorrow. But tomorrow, if I look at that, I'll be like, I don't give a shit. So, ah, anyway, good night, Corey. Uh, it was a pleasure having you around. I absolutely appreciate it. Um, Pantera, Marsville, is easy top are all from Texas. Yes, thank you. Uh, we have reached the end of chat. It's only twelve twenty. I remember a couple of weeks ago, you you assholes kept me up till three o'clock, uh, <laughs> and then and then I, I I didn't do a show on Thursday. Um, I caught some kind of bug the next day. I just felt like trash. And and you know I was up at at six thirty seven o'clock the next morning. I was ready to go. Got the kids off to school. Everything was good. Made breakfast. Kids went to school. Went to the shop. Did some work. And then right around three o'clock, I was just like. I almost threw up. I just felt like trash. Like, yep, we're not doing the show tonight. It's just not going to happen. Um, has created some unfortunate numbering issues with our trivia show because uh, this is show number 80. Tomorrow night's trivia show is going to be episode number 79. Uh, or maybe we just skip 77. No, we did 77. 78. We just did 77 out of order because we did 76, 78, 77. No. 78. Well, ah, shit. Whatever. We'll just skip 79 is what I'm saying. We'll just skip We'll skip last week's show because we postponed the week before to last week. So 77 was moved to last week. Last week should have been 79. This is episode 80. So tomorrow will be episode 81. We just skip 79. Yeah, I just created an unfortunate naming convention. That's all. Numbering convention. Um, and Margaret Rolling and Beans... What? Uh, she was on Flintstones. Bye bye. bye. <laughs> oh wow. Okay, I don't know any of that. That's uh, that's crazy. I, I've heard of Bye Bye Birdie, and I know the Flintstones. Uh, Viva Las Vegas. That was an Elvis movie, wasn't it? Good times. Um. Okay, that's the end of my water. I'm going to. Let's see here. Do I have a... I don't have any cocktail mixins in here. Oh, no, I do. I have a, uh, I have a little old-fashioned mix. Uh, but I don't have any ice. Hmm. I'm going to just pour myself a fresh drink. Uh, and then we'll get back into chat. It'll be fantastic. It'll be fun. You see, uh, you might see my little trophy that I got from the, the other day when I was in Dallas. Little bottle of Eagle Rare, and you also notice if you if you have a astute observation, it doesn't fit in my bar rack. That's the worst part about Eagle Rare is it's it's a stupid sized bottle. It doesn't fit. Um, it doesn't fit in the bar racks where like it's supposed to. It's a dumb sized bottle. So if you ever get into the whiskey business and you're designing your packaging. Might I strongly encourage you to not make stupid sized bottles that don't fit on your fucking shelves? That's just dumb. Why would you do that? 
Why would you go and make a bottle that doesn't fit on a shelf? I mean, it's a it's a good looking bottle. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's a good looking bottle, but I mean, look at that. I can't close I can't close my damn rack because the stupid fucking bottle's there. That bottle's gonna have to go in the other room on top of the china cabinet because I can't. I can't. I, I, I can't. It's just dumb. It's like why? Why did you do that? That's the worst. That's just stupid. <sighs> anyway, uh, I just pushed a button on my. Let's fix that. Put that back where it goes. All right. All right. All right. That's too loud now. All right. Where are we? Okay. There we go. Fixed it. <sighs> it does make it handy to reach. You know, it's right there. It's it, it's got a good grip on it. You know, it's 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 a good solid grip. But you know what else has a good grip? A stubby, a good stubby square bottle. And this one, pop that right on someone's jaw. They ain't gonna fuck with you twice. This one, I guess you can get a good, a good, uh, a good uh, uh, shot in if you uh, spin it overhand like that. I suppose. Darth Vader mug, Texas whiskey book. Okay. <laughs> A silly straw bourbon bottle. That's funny. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, okay. So uh, schedule for the rest of the week. Let's get into some a little bit of housekeeping. Schedule for the rest of the week. Tomorrow is trivia night, uh, 9 p.m. Trivia, episode 81 of our uh, whiskey happy hour. Uh, I am going to endeavor to record a, a video of comparing uh, the mix with a homemade, handmade um, uh, old-fashioned. Compare the homemade, handmade with the mix old-fashioned and see the two side by side. Um, I may bring in another person to sample the two drinks because, of course, I'm biased. My lovely wife is going to be biased. Uh, she's had them before. I might be able to trick her into doing it again because it'll be a freshly new blind taste testing. Uh, and she won't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I might I might trick Lisa into doing it. We'll see. Uh, tomorrow night, I have no tastings planned. Tomorrow, I have no tastings planned, just trivia. And then Friday, if you're in the Humble area or in the Houston area, I will be doing a tasting at the Total Wine in uh, humble. It is entirely possible that Lisa will be in my place. Uh, good night, Addie. It was a pleasure. Thank you for joining us. Uh, but if you're in the humble area, that's that's your chance at the Total Wine in Humble. It might be me. It might be Lisa. Uh, Saturday, we are hosting a podcast at the distillery. Uh, if you're in the area and you're around at one o'clock, you're welcome to join us. But don't tell anybody uh, because if you show up then, you know, you'll be one of the only people there, along with me. Uh, and then, of course, uh, Friday, uh, let's see here. Friday, if I do the tasting, I won't be at the distillery. But if I don't do the tasting, I will be at the distillery, and we'll do a live from the distillery. I am 99% certain we'll do one tomorrow as well. And if you join in on the live, join in on the chat, you get on the wheel of doom and glory and a chance to win our prize package of delicious samples of whiskeys. And once again, the samples are bum, bum, four of them. Our straight whiskey, from lightest to darkest. Our straight whiskey, our special reserve, our double oak rye, and our Boomtown bourbon. The Boomtown bourbon is a very special concoction. The reason we have a distillery. Uh, distilled right here in the state of Texas. Uh, aged in five-gallon barrels for anywhere between six to nine months. Uh, bottled at 90 proof. And of course, made by yours truly, handcrafted by me. Uh, I'll also throw in a, a cigar from a national tobacconist, uh, one that you will thoroughly enjoy. If you're not into cigars, toss it in the trash or give it to a friend. It's up to you. I don't care. Uh, I'm not the boss of you. I can't tell you what to do. I can only guide you to the waters and offer you a drink. You, my friend, have to be the jackass to take the drink yourself. I can't make you do it. And, and, and I learned this lesson the hard way. When you do lead a camel to the water, they don't work like straws. You can't suck water into the camel by 
you know, puckering up and pulling from one end so it like makes the water come up through the mouth. That's not how camels work. They're not a straw. So just keep that in mind if you ever find yourself in a, at an oasis with a camel. You can't, you cannot, under any circumstance, make the camel drink. It just doesn't work that way. So, um, there's your opportunity. Uh, Wheel of Doom and Glory. Anytime you see a live with us, get into ch comments, get into chat. You get on the wheel uh, another time to get a chance to win our... Uh, uh, box of samples um lightest to darkest sounds like the love of my life of exes before they <laughs> hey did it just get dark <laughs> glad i could help <laughs> i guess um uh what else next week uh next week uh i am doing sampling at uh the memorial Total Wine, the Lower Heights Total Wine, and the Sugar Land Total Wine. Sugar Land being on the southwest side of Houston. Uh, home, Former home to Imperial Sugar before it got bought out and closed. Current home to uh, the Sugar Land Space Cowboys. Double uh, A affiliate for... Double A, triple A. Triple A affiliate for the Houston Astros. The Double A affiliate is down in Corpus Christi. The single A affiliate is in, I don't know where the single A affiliate is for the Houston Astros. Um, not that it matters. Uh, anyway, uh, what else is there? What else is there to know? Oh, uh, our live music series will return in September. I haven't set a schedule of dates yet, but that will be forthcoming over the next course of the next uh, probably week or so. When I set a schedule of dates and figure out what bands are going to be playing on those dates. Um, May not have a, I'm definitely not going to have a band every Friday going forward, but we are going to have entertainment frequently on the Fridays at the distillery. We're working. On, I'm working on a full schedule, uh, and we will we'll have a good time. One way or another, we're going to have a good time. Um, I don't know what else to tell you guys. Uh, I I think we're done for the night. Uh, it's twelve thirty. Uh, my lovely wife, like the handmade, uh, the handmade uh, old fashioned over the bar mix old fashioned, which sounds about right because I'm awesome. So, yeah, yeah. Um, but there you go. We'll see you next week. We'll I'll, I'll see you tomorrow night for trivia. Ten. P or, I'm sorry, nine p.m. Central Time tomorrow night for trivia. Um. And that's it. I'm gonna. I think we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up, uh, unless someone says something for me to talk about in the next thirty seconds. Well, I'll, I'm just gonna sit here and look at the chat for thirty seconds. Well, no, yeah, y'all are five seconds behind me, so I'll just wait thirty seconds. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Maybe tomorrow when I'm doing the live from the distillery, we'll talk about. The student loan kerfluffle. There's a whole bunch of people who are big mad about student loans. Um, might want to do a show. Uh, really? Really? Oh, maybe I could get her to be a guest on the show. Because she's had a weird life. She was like the first reality TV star, right? Like the first person who was famous for... I mean, Kim Kardashian was at least famous for having a sex tape and a big ass, right? But Tila Tequila was famous for being famous. Like she was, she was one of the first like, like, social media celebrities. She became uh, MySpace famous, if I recall. Maybe I should do a show on T. Maybe I should. Hmm. Make sure I'm fully vaxxed before we do the show, though. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. She's a lovely person. Uh, hell of a performer too, because apparently. Uh, I mean, you know, her character that she performs as and, and, and her, she herself, they're very similar, but you know, she, she keeps up a hell of a good act. Maybe I'll reach out to her people, see if I can, I'm sure she doesn't come on podcasts and shows for free though. She's not one of those people that just, I mean, she's like a famous person. If you're going to get her, you have to pay her. 
I presume. Hmm. Hmm. I'm going to have to look into that. Maybe get somebody like Square Table to uh, help me out. Maybe reach out to Joe and see what he can do. Maybe see if he can get a guest like Tila Tequila to come on our show. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, children of all ages, thank you all for joining us in chat, uh, joining me on the show. Y'all are the ones who make this show interesting. Y'all are the ones who make the show fun. Uh, I'm just the host. Y'all are the, uh, y'all are the people who uh, keep me coming back because y'all keep the conversation going and keep me engaged. Uh, otherwise, this show would have been over at like twenty to or ten till ten till twelve. Uh, so thank you all for coming, or ten till eleven, uh, whatever. Whenever I finish that fucking monologue, I don't know. Uh, thank you all for coming. Thank you for participating. Thank you for being in chat. Uh, thank you for being awesome to each You're other. You are looking a little ordinary. Wrong, that was the wrong button. Sorry. Uh, don't forget, drink better whiskey. Uh, that's your life hack for making sure that your whiskey doesn't taste like shit. Just drink better whiskey. Uh, drink better cocktails. Drink better whiskey makes better cocktails, right? And better whiskey makes better stories among friends. So uh, be awesome to each other. Think with your whole brain. Love with your whole heart. And uh, uh, always, 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 always uh, do better tomorrow than you did yesterday. Cheers and good night. Let's see, which button shall I do? Cheers and good night. <laughs>